The Mercury College Football Scoreboard. Brought to you by Mercury, the shape you want to be in. All right, you saw the scene at Austin, Texas. Big game there tonight. Texas Longhorns going against the Texas A&M Aggies. Southwest Conference Championship on the line and the Cotton Bowl. We thank Doug Looney for joining us. For Bino, I'm Larry Burnett. Let's go to Austin, Texas. This is Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, and more than 80,000 fans are here for the 93rd renewal of one of the great rivalries in all of college football, the Texas Longhorns against the Aggies of A&M, where tradition means so very much. Monday in College Station, they held the Elephant Walk, where the seniors dress in costume and cover the Aggie campus, supposedly looking for a place to die. In Austin, the scene was a little more conventional at the Longhorn Pep Rally, where the students get fired up for the game. Fred Akers will need all the emotion he can get and more from his players tonight if they are to spring a major upset and maybe save their coach's job. In the last two years, A&M has racked up 79 points, winning 37-12 in 1984, and then 42-10 last season. The Longhorns have been embarrassed and think it's time to get even. Trying to favor because my sophomore year we had a chance to win a go to Cotton Bowl and win a sophomore's conference championship and uh and him knocked us out of it. My junior year went the same way. So I think it's about time that we uh, turn return the favor to him. For Jackie Sherrill, the 1985 meeting between these teams was the realization of a championship season and a bid to the Cotton Bowl. For the coach and his players, anything less this time around would have to be considered a major disappointment. Basically, I feel like the season would be a disappointment if we didn't make it to the Cotton Bowl. You know, we worked hard all summer and into two -a days, and right now, this is the only thing we want to do is make it to the Cotton Bowl and beat Texas. For A&M, a victory or tie tonight in Austin means another championship ring, an honor the Aggies hope they won't have to share with Arkansas and Baylor. For Texas and Fred Akers, it may mean even more. A victory could save the season and perhaps a coaching career. It would also cast a familiar orange glow over the skies of Austin, Texas. This is the Lone Star State, where it is going to get wet and remain rather cool. A 30% chance of rain has already been realized here in Austin, Texas, for tonight's battle between A&M and Texas. Now, in the Southwest Conference, Texas A&M is playing for its second outright championship in a row. But if they lose, they will head to the Orange Bowl, and Arkansas will represent the Southwest Conference in the Cotton Bowl. Happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you, and we are happy that you joined us tonight. Hello, I'm Jim Brando. Now, we've already touched on the importance of this game for Texas A&M and Jackie Sherrill's club, but for his counterpart, Fred Akers, this could be it. Reports surfaced today that Fred Akers' future will be decided by the Board of Regents on Saturday. This is his last chance to make an impression. Now, Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally will call tonight's action. Gentlemen, how is that for importance in a game? Jim, there is so much emotion surrounding this one and so much emotion surrounding and uncertainty surrounding Fred Akers, the coach. I thought a local writer made a great point this week when he said a lot of the Texas fans are upset that Fred Akers has been left twisting in the wind so long, and I'm sure his players aren't very happy about it either. Well, I think you're right, Mike. You don't have to spend a lot of time around this Texas team to figure out they like Fred Akers. They like the young coaching staff he brought in here this year. I think they're excited about the future. They played very well. They're actually just a few points from going to the Cotton Bowl themselves. I think the emotion of saving their coach's job tonight will be a big factor in this game. I think the biggest thing Texas is going to have to do on defense is to try to stop Kevin Murray in an offense that got 74 points last week. Well, stopping Kevin Murray is difficult, and the reason is he has so much talent around him, and it's an unusual offense. Their fullback, Roger Vick, is their leading ground gainer. He's a game-breaker. Their tailback, Keith Woodside, is an excellent receiver out of the backfield, and their tight end, Rod Bernstein, is their leading receiver. Now, for defense, the key is they're going to have to go with a lot of different coverages because they don't have good linebackers right now. They're young, they're inexperienced. So I look for Texas to be gambling on defense. Now, Texas, it believes, on offense, has the kind of players that can give that complex A&M defense fits tonight. Well, A&M likes to play a lot of different looks, a lot of defenses, a lot of man-to-man -man coverages and blitzes. 
but because of two players, Brett Stafford, the quarterback, and Eric Metcalf, their tailback, I don't think they're going to be able to do it against Texas. Metcalf can come out of the backfield. You see him all over the field running in motion. He'll catch a lot of passes tonight. And Brett Stafford can hurt him. He can hurt Texas and A&M with both quarterback draws and just going out of the pocket and running on his own. So I look for A&M to play very conservatively tonight. A lot riding on this one. A Cotton Bowl or an Orange Bowl bid for A&M for both teams. Bragging rights in a state where bragging rights mean an awful lot. A&M and Texas coming up. Live CFA football on ESPN is brought to you by Michelob. Exceptionally smooth, distinctive taste is why the night belongs to Michelob. By McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And by UPS. Whether it's for overnight letters or packages, UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring except Five of the Mouse. Presenting Fievel, the adorable star of Steven Spielberg's presentation of the Don Bluth film, An American Tale. Now, collect all four different McDonald's stocking ornaments featuring Fievel. Each one comes free when you buy the perfect stocking stuffer. A $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates. This holiday season, give a terrific surprise. Free Fievel stockings with our gift certificates inside. At UPS, it was never our intention to become a tourist attraction. But every year, scores of efficiency-minded Japanese businessmen show up and ask to tour our facilities. You see, UPS is so efficient, we can deliver next day air usually for half what other companies charge. Which is why so many Japanese find UPS the most rewarding package tour anywhere. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. We're not a company but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company, we're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. We are back in Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas tonight. It's the Longhorns playing host to Texas A&M. For many a senior, this will be their last opportunity to take part in such a great rivalry in the Southwest. Tonight, we highlight two of them in particular. This is the Lone Star State. It is said that Texans have a great deal of pride, and there's nothing they take more pride in than their football. In College Station, Texas, people live and die with their beloved Aggies from Texas A&M. For four years, senior wide receiver Shea Walker has enjoyed great success for the Aggies, and a victory tonight would make it complete. A hundred miles north is Austin, where senior defensive end Blake Bronner hopes for a big win tonight that would salvage a disappointing season. It's a prideful thing, and um, I know there's more important things in life than this game, but uh, it's all that, that I have and that our team has at this present time this week to do. And um, it's, a, it's a big game for us, and it's important for our season burn orange winners they're you know that's the way they are they've they got a good football team they play hard uh they have a lot of a lot of talent there they're the university of texas you know that's the that's the highlight of our state i guess is their university so uh it's you know it means something when we go out and play those guys shea walker grew up dreaming about playing in front of big texas crowds as did Bronner. tonight both suit up against each other for the final time it's time to kind of reflect on the past and and um, everything that this school has meant to me. And um, that's something that I'll, uh, I'll never forget. It's been a great experience. Um, I love this university, I love the program. And it's something that I've always dreamed about, was playing for the University of Texas and, and, and wearing a uniform with that Longhorn on the helmet uh, ever since I was old enough to carry a football and, and play against my brother in the front yard. Going out this last game is kind of, not sad, but it you know, kind of makes you think back on it and stuff and look back and, and realize that I've been you know fortunate to play as long as I have and I just want to go out with a with a good game and I'm gonna go out and play you know play my heart out and leave it all on the field it's 
to me personally, football has been, you know, it's been something that I, that I can really lean on and look back to and, and think of. I've really gotten a lot of strength from it because uh, there have been times when I don't feel comfortable about, you know, some things that might be going on, like growing up or whatever, problems that you have or something, but I always know that, you know, I can go out and then practice. Personally, it, it means a, a chance to, for me to display the talents that God gave me. Um, I give him total credit for, for everything that, that I've been able to do out there because um, without him, I'm, I'm nothing. And uh, um, it's been a great experience and it's, it's a great learning experience. You know, I think too many people, you know, you leave it on the field and uh, it, it builds character and it, it teaches you how far you can push yourself and um, what you're really made of. And I think that's something that's going to gonna last me uh, for the rest of my life. Football lends itself to everlasting relationships, and that's what Bronner will miss the most. The team concept, the guys on the team, the friendships, the relationships that you build, um, those are going to last forever. But um, I think that's what every athlete misses when it's all over. Murray has a man on the wing, and he wants to throw for it. Guns it in the end zone, touchdown! A bullet pass to Shea Walker. I like for them to remember me as a, a consistent person, uh, somebody that always gave 100% and uh, that they could always count on. It is a great rivalry played by some great players, and I think Shea Walker and Blake Bronner really typify what college football and this rivalry in the Southwest Conference is all about. There may be a war of words, but there's an underlying respect that these two teams and those two players have for one another. So will it be Gig'em Aggies or Hook'em Horns? We'll soon see from Austin, Texas, where a turkey night is special on ESPN. of Daly's cocktail mixes at your favorite store. Now that we're a family, some things have become a lot more important to us. When we had our home insulated, we were concerned about our heating and cooling bills, but we were more concerned about fire safety. So we selected CertainTeed InsulSafe 3. InsulSafe is non-combustible, thermally efficient fiberglass insulation. Sure, saving energy is important to us, but insulating safely is what InsulSafe is all about. Sports Center Sunday previews the day's most important NFL matchups and reviews the most exciting sports highlights of the week. Sunday morning on ESPN. Larry Burnett back here in the ESPN studios. Bino Cook and I will be keeping track of the games in progress tonight. We're back at halftime as well. Of course, the game in progress tonight has the number one Miami Hurricanes going against East Carolina at the Orange Bowl. Jeff Toretta filling in for Vinny Testaverde, a quarterback. He's already thrown two touchdown passes to Mike Irvin. The Hurricanes now up 16-3. to That one is in the second quarter. Our game, of course, Texas and Texas A&M. It's a big game for Texas A&M. They can win the Southwest Conference Championship and the Cotton Bowl. Jackie Sherrill looking to become, do something that no other Aggie coach has ever done, and that's beat Texas three years in a row. Yes, he was hired to do two things, beat Texas and go to the Cotton Bowl. Also bragging rights at the Petroleum Club in Dallas on Monday for the team it wins. And that's one reason he was hired. The Aggie Rooters got tired of going to that club and going as losers. We've got to keep in mind, too, the folks in Arkansas will be keeping track of our game tonight because they have a lot riding on it as well. We are going out to Austin, Texas once again to Tim Brando. There's a look at the Texas flag that symbolizes the state of Texas, which is got the tradition of football behind it. Tonight, the Texas Longhorns and the Texas A&M Aggies get together for a special Thanksgiving evening of college football here on ESPN. Fred Akers will be leading his team out for what could possibly be the last time in his career here at Texas. Has a lot riding on this game. Jackie Sherrill, we should mention, normally will never allow a 
a team to come on the field prior to them. That's not the case this week. Fred Akers and his Texas Longhorns are making their way out. And this is an inspired team. They may be trying to win one for Coach Akers tonight. So A&M and Texas are coming up next on ESPN. shape the fit or the fit gallery by Hager experience an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness Atra plus the plus is the white luber smooth strip that releases lubricants as you shave you never felt anything smoother Atra plus by Gillette the essence of shaving <laughs> no one really knows how your skin got sensitive but if it is, oh. try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. Oh. New Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. We're at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas for a Thanksgiving night game between Texas A&M and Texas. We hope you and your family had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Get another slice of pumpkin pie and sit back and enjoy this one because it's one of the great rivalries in all of college football. And all the seniors for both clubs will come out. And it looks like the entire Texas team now coming out for the toss of the coin in the center of the field. And so much emotion involved in this one. A lot of heated words this week, Patrick. Oh, well, uh, you'd think that Texas would have a lot of uh, advantage here emotionally playing for the coach and being at home. But John Hagee, their strong safety, got Texas A&M pretty fired up. Tails. And Texas wins the toss. And Texas has won the toss. And they're pointing toward a goal. Texas. Toss. a little trouble that uh, field might. So Texas A&M will receive. And Texas, I'm not sure, Pat, if they deferred the choice. It didn't sound like it. It seemed like they just took the end of the field. Yeah, it's very unusual because it's not very windy tonight. You'd think they'd want to have the ball, but uh, maybe they want to fire that defense up, let them stop a &M. Could be. Those last second preparations before the kick. And there is Texas on the sideline with embattled coach Fred Akers. And they have already announced that there will be a decision made on his future Saturday. Here's the way this series has gone. It is the oldest, of course, in the Southwest, and Texas dominant in it. But Texas A&M is closing the gap, and in the last 10 years, it's 5-4. and four, Fred Aker's record against Texas A&M, and the last two years, the game has been dominated by the Aggies. There's Jackie Sherrill in his fifth year already with 34 victories at Texas A&M. He's done a great job for this club and has them on the verge of another Southwest Conference championship and another bid in the Cotton Bowl. And there is Fred Akers. He's just thinking about one more win, and it would be his 87th as the Longhorn head coach succeeding Darrell Roy. There's so much tradition in this game, Mike. You know, I'd rate it only second to the Yale-Harvard game as far as importance and emotion, <laughs> and I think we have it all tonight. I didn't know they got emotional up there. <laughs> Once a year, Rod Harris will wait on Jeff Ward's kick. There is Harris in the middle of a three deep. Averaged 18.8 yards a carry on kickoff return. It is really a pleasure for us to be here tonight. Most of us have watched this game as kids growing up uh, with parents and grandparents on Thanksgiving and always made sure we watched Texas, Texas A&M. It is truly an honor to be here to do this one. 
especially with all the emotion, and you can really feel it here at Memorial Stadium with 80,000-plus on hand. Valentine will take it. Make it Washington. Cuts to the outside. Washington at the 30. 34-yard line before he's driven out of bounds, and Texas A&M, after a 31-yard kickoff return by Mickey Washington, will start in excellent field position. There's junior quarterback Kevin Murray. Already has the Southwest Conference career leader in TD passes. A lot of talent behind him, too. Roger Vick is the key to the rusher game, while Bernstein and Walker have had exceptional seasons as receivers. And the interior line for AM has overcome inexperience and has developed into quite a unit. And they'll give it to the fullback. This is Vic, who's tripped up as he crosses the 35 to the 36. And that was Espinoza. That Texas defense has had some problems, but not in the front four. Espinoza, Bronner, and Aldridge are one, two, three on the team in tackles. Injuries have devastated the linebackers and hurt Texas the most this year. The secondary is better now, especially with Peavy's return at free safety. He is a big hitter. Woodside is in at tailback. Now he and Vic 43 split, and Woodside goes to a wing. And second and eight. Murray looking in the flat, then dumps it over the middle of Bernstein. His big tight end, first down. Gets to the 49, still in his feet to midfield. Tillman makes the tackle along with Duncan. And Bernstein has just had a great year. Well, he had an outstanding Cotton Bowl for the last game last year. He only had nine catches the entire season, came into the Cotton Bowl, had six catches, and they expected him to have a big year, but I don't think they expected him to lead the conference in receiving, and that's what they've been doing, dumping it to him underneath and letting him run. He was very disappointed when they put him at tight end. He's a running back and wanted to stay there. Woodside again on a win. And they'll give it to Vic. Big hole off the right side. Vic to the 40 to the 38-yard line. Gaping hole on the right side. Richard Peavy, number 42, had to make the stop. A 13-yard gain for Vic. Number 94 for Texas, Brian Espinosa, who made the first play at 21 tackles last week. He's the key to this game. He's got their double team in. They're coming out. They're going to take him out of the plays. And they're going to have some big holes if they double team him like that. Again, no linebackers there for support, Mike. That's the problem. If you double-team offensive linemen, some linebacker is supposed to be free. They are very inexperienced. They have been terribly injured at that position. Fifth again. They'll do it all night if Texas can't stop them, but Texas stopped them that time. And up from the secondary was Stephen Braggs to make the big hit. Aldrich also in on the stop. It's very, very unusual for your front four, your defensive line. Linemen, as you said, three, uh, the, they're the three leading tacklers on this Texas team. Usually you look for your linebackers, particularly in a 4-3. And that shows the youth there and also the fact that Texas is strong up front. It is second down, seven yards to go, opening minutes of the ball game. The ball at the Texas 35-yard line. Vic again. Tripped up. The first man that got him was 94, Espinoza. Then he fell into the pile. Bronner also in on the stop. Good job by Espinoza. 249-pound senior is very quick. Junior college transfer. And it's odd to see a junior college transfer as a starting lineman on a program uh, like Texas. You don't see it that often. They'd be in big trouble if they hadn't uh, acquired him. And another unusual thing is that 250 pounds, uh, he really does it on his quickness and just his ability to read. They'll go with three wide receivers on this play. To the near side, make it four wide receivers now on third and long. Murray under pressure, dumps it over the middle and throws behind Tony Thompson. Eric Jeffries was right with him. And Murray under pressure didn't throw it that well that time. Boy, the operative word right there is pressure. They put it on him in a hurry. He really had a difficult throw there because he was hurt. He didn't give his receiver enough time to cut across the defender. Espinoza drilled him. And Craig Stump will come in to punt it away. Although now they set up and will shift into punt formation. Something Texas has to be aware of. On fourth and five. Stump just trying to pooch it close to the goal line and will get the bounce sideways and go out of bounds around the 12 13 yard line so stump doesn't get much of a kick in terms of distance only 21 yards but exactly what the coach was looking for 
something that went out of bounds inside the 15. Junior quarterback Brett Stafford, who already owns 11 Texas passing records, but has had 14 interceptions this year. The running game has struggled with no one back over 500 yards, and the receiving core has lost a good one this week when tight end Tim McCrary went down. The line seems to be a collection of injuries and changes. I said McCrary, that's Tim McCray, suffered a freak injury to his spinal cord and a half-speed blocking grip. And absolutely nothing for Norris, who's drilled by Johnny Holland. That A&M defense up front is quite good, especially on the pass rush and making big plays. And at linebacker Holland and Kelm have had outstanding seasons. They're one, two in tackles. The secondary is the least experienced unit. It's been the most vulnerable, too. Second and 10, maybe a passing down for Stafford. Got Metcalf in there behind him. And Metcalf will get the ball on the sweep. Got it back, darts to about the 18-yard line. And it was Howard, the outside linebacker at 223 pounds, an excellent athlete who made the tackle. Metcalf does have his dad's moves, doesn't he? Uh, he was so dangerous. I can remember punting to him. Every time I punted, I just prayed I wouldn't have to try to tackle him in the open field. And, they, you know, they say Eric's a little quicker. He's a little smaller, but so explosive back there. That would have been quite a matchup to see you trying to tackle Terry Metcalf. That had been fun. <laughs> Third and five for Texas. Opening possession of the first half of the Longhorn. Stafford dumps it to Clark. The tight end's got the first down at the 24-yard line. Howard made the stop along with Helm, but Clark, who had 14 catches coming in, gets his first grab. Well, there was a case of A&M going to that conservative defense. A lot of times uh, they'll blitz in that situation, but they've decided against Texas that they're going to give them these little dumps over the middle like to their tight end. It's a little unusual for A&M. Saw Everett Gay, number 19, check into their, your picture. He's the flanker back for the Longhorns on first and 10 from the 24. Metcalf and Norris are running back. That's Gay in motion. Metcalf slashes inside to the 30. This is the one area, Pat, where Texas has not been strong this year. That's the running game. Well, and particularly when you've got to use someone like Eric Metcalf to go up the middle for you. They haven't got a lot of yardage there. Their fullback, Norris. So they need to go with outside with Metcalf and then try to sneak him in just like that. And he can hide behind the lineman and hopefully find a little seam. Kevin Nelson shuttling in off the bench. He'll be the flanker on this play. Second down, four yards to go, Longhorn. And it's complete to Metcalf. He gets to the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. It's another first down. Metcalf, who now has 35 catches on the year. That's the way they love to use him. Get him in the open field. If they can get him outside and let him open, uh, run in the open field, there's no one out there in a that's going to be able to guard him man-to-man. -man. But here we again. We see him in their zone. He just Stafford does a nice job of finding him. Now he'll turn it upfield and use his speed and pick up the extra yardage. They have to be patient, this Texas offense. They have to control the ball and take those little throws and try to turn them upfield and turn them into six- and seven-yard games, just like that. Stafford, two for two, two little dump passes over the middle, but perfectly effective. Texas would dearly love to get on the board first. Metcalf, nowhere to go, cut it back, got maybe a yard. Good play by Chet Brooks coming up from the corner. Number 27 closed in a hurry. Had a lot of people around the ball and quick. Well, they have tremendous speed in their, uh, their linebackers. Howard, Holland, and Kelm can all run, and Bullet, the substitutes, come in for John Roper, can run too. So it's very difficult to go laterally, even when you're as fast as Eric Metcalf. Texas on second and nine. Gets Tony Jones into the ball game for the first time. He's to the top of your screen, number four. The little man has uh, had four catches, three for touchdowns. Instead, the delay to Metcalf can't get outside of Sammy O'Brien who's playing with a painful turf toe, didn't play very much a week ago, but was right there and swallowed up Metcalf. Well, one thing that really worries the Texas coaches is they have Alan Champagne, who's really third on their, at the beginning of the season at center. He's going to have to handle Samuel Bryant, which he didn't on that play. So Texas may have to go with some double teams with Blackmore and Zaton, their two other guards, which, of course, will free up the linebackers to make the plays. Run blocking is going to be a little tough because they like it. lost tight end Tim McRae and right guard Billy Ray Todd to injuries this week. It's third and about eight. Stafford guns it incomplete. 
Good defense that time by Flowers as they were throwing for Johnson. The crowd, I think, wanted an interference call. It'll bring up a fourth down. You've got 8.09 to go in a rapidly moving first quarter. And Alex Waits, who is one of the better kickers in the country, averaging 46.2 yards a kick and almost 42 yards net, is in the punt. And Harris is deep to the sea. Chance to bring it back across the 20 and trip as he got across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. An eight-yard return after a 42-yard kick. Timeout with eight minutes to go. First quarter, we are scoreless between Texas and Texas A&M. that works. Lean on the 350 V8, now available in every full-size Chevy. Now fuel injected for the most power and torque of any half-ton pickup. You were born to drum. You and Casio. The stereo keyboard comes with PCM drum sounds. The DP-1 electronic drums add snare, bass, rim shot, hi-hat. Casio, be the drummer you were born to be. Texas A&M at Texas is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by Casio, maker of the shock-resistant, water-resistant G-Shock. It's one tough watch to beat. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. A&M and the Longhorns tied nothing, nothing. Eight minutes to go, first quarter. Both teams have had one possession and not been able to move the ball. At least for a score. This is Woodside cutting outside on the sweep and carrying bodies with him to about the 33-yard line. Stephen Braggs, number six, in on the stop, along with middle linebacker Dwayne Duncan. And you, you, now you wonder who's going to take credit for this. I think that may be a little move by the Texas fans trying to make the Aggies look I like they so can't still. I think our director, Mark Payton, is a Texas graduate, uh, actually did that sign and, and pointed it out to us. It looks like a Greek spelling or something. Yeah, it does. Second and three. Fake to Woodside. Murray under pressure again. And guns it complete to Bernstein. It'll be enough for the first down. And he is really nailed out of bounds into the sideline bench. Braggs got over there in a hurry, and Jackie Sherrill is upset at it, wanted a flag, and Bernstein taking a little time to get up. Looked like it quite a legal hit, however. Well, Rod Bernstein, right, right in the middle of your screen, just going to run a little crossing route again. This is what he does so well. He's only averaging a little under 11 yards, and this is why. He catches a lot of this ball control type throws. Murray goes to him when he's in trouble. He looked upfield and found Bernstein on the short route. That looked like a pretty good hit by Bragg. Got him at the sideline. It's not clearly out of bounds, but it's a first down. Vic again. This time dragged down right as he got to the line of scrimmage. Steve Llewellyn, the 271-pound sophomore from Fort Worth, brought him down. And as we told you, that front four for Texas has done a pretty good job all year long. The entire defense has played better since Oklahoma. And even the young linebackers have gotten better since they've had a chance to play some. Well, they've got four or five games under their belt. They really just were hit with so many injuries. They were down to third stringers, guys that had never played before. But they've recovered now, and I think the coaches have got the right strategy for this game. Second and six. Murray, another little dump off this time to Shea Walker. And Walker's flattened at the line of scrimmage by Eric Jeffries. They are looking for these short passes and doing an excellent job of defensing. Well, they're mixing up their coverages. Again, they, they have confidence that their defensive front four can put pressure on Murray. They're going to leave their linebackers and some of their secondary up close in those plays. And that time, too, Pat, it looked like they only had two linebackers in there and were going with their five defensive backs, something I think Jackie Sherrill expected, too. All right, they'll go in five and six defensive backs on first and second downs, even, because they need to help their linebacker situation. Third and four. Harris in motion. 
Texas showing blitz. Did they get back off? No, they're offside. And from the blind side, Thomas Aldridge nailed Murray. But unfortunately for Texas, they're going to be called for offsides. And that will give AM a first down. A little too anxious. Uh, there's no excuse for linebacker or secondary guy going offside. Oh, no, it's against AM. Holy cow. He must have flinched when he jumped across. If you don't make contact, then it's up to the offense to stay. Boy, this is a surprising call here. That's it looked like the left tackle barely moved his hand. Number 79, Lewis Cheek. Right there, Aldridge. He comes around the end. Thomas Aldridge is their leading sacker. Excellent pass rusher, and he's going to come in there all the time on the outside and try to contain him. There's Reveille. There was no play. It will be third down. So they have to mark off the penalty, so it's going to be third and now nine because it was a procedure penalty before the snap. Gerald Senegal checks into the uh, Texas lineup. So it looks like they have six defensive backs in there right now on a sure passing situation. Murray, here comes the pressure again. Throws poorly this time for Woodside. And Murray is throwing the ball a lot like the way we saw him throw in the opening game of the year at LSU. He is not throwing it confidently, and he's bouncing him in there. I think part of the reason is Texas came in here with this game plan of confusing him. They're going with a lot of different looks. They know they can't stand back, but let him stand back and throw the ball. I think they're confusing him. Todd Schantz will come on to punt. Schantz was punting uh, earlier in the year. He has only kicked eight times this season. They're coming after it. And they almost got there. Metcalf driven all the way back to the nine-yard line. Signals fair catch. Texas went for the block, and Shantz unloaded for 50 yards. 5:35 to go in the quarter. We are still scoreless. Listen to the heartbeat of America. And you've got what it takes. Put yourself in today's Chevrolet Celebrity Eurosport and listen to your heartbeat. The heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. You were born to drum. You and Cassio. Stereo keyboard comes with PCM drum sounds. The DP1 electronic drums add snare, bass, rim shot, hi hat. Casio, be the drummer you were born to be. The BYU offense is tough to beat, but San Diego State may have the defense to do it. Live Saturday night at 7:30 Eastern. You have to wonder who makes up these signs, who sits around all week and does it, but we thank you for the thought, and it's Texas A&M. Texas, nothing, nothing, first quarter. Texas backed up to its own 10-yard line. Metcalf, the deep man in the eye, and a fake by Stafford. Complete. Got a first down up at the 30-yard line to Gabriel Johnson. And Stafford is really throwing the ball with a lot of confidence. Well, here's the new Texas offense. They're not just running the ball anymore. First down from their 10-yard line to go with the play action. Just hit Gabriel Johnson on a little comeback route. And Stafford threw that ball right on the money. But again, it's the philosophy that's changed so much here at Texas. And that's why they're excited about the future. Stafford, three out of four, 34 yards. Already holds 11 school records. Just past Bobby Lane for the number one all-time yardage mark. And he'll run the option this time. Fakes and pays for it as he got back inside, and it was Big Howard. Todd grabbed him and threw him down. Dwayne Painter, who is the offensive coordinator, came uh, this year, said that one another thing, another way they'll attack this Texas A&M defense, because they're so good laterally, is that option with Stafford, who can keep the ball. But there you saw Todd Howard, number 73, made that play. Those linebackers are very quick, and they're good tacklers. LaRon Brown, 84 to the near side. Jones, number four to the far side. Here comes the blitz. They unload for Jones. He jumped too early, and the ball is overthrown. Flowers on coverage. 
Boy, he went up there like two seconds. I guess when you're when you're only 5'7", you have to jump as high as you can, as early as you can. Well, he went to J.C. earlier this year. He wanted to be the next Spud Webb, and he definitely gets up in the air, but the problem is he's not quite a seasoned receiver yet. As you can see, his timing's way off. And there's the ball. I'll tell you, when you're 5'7", you better jump at the exact correct <laughs> moment if you're going to come down with a pass like that. Ball did float a little bit. He can go deep, too. He's the Texas 200-meter champion in high school. Third and eight right now for Stafford. Texas A&M was trying to get time out. They had too many men on the field, and the pass is complete to Metcalf. Metcalf to the 35-yard line. Rod Sadler, number 99, was running off the field, knew he wasn't going to make it, and signaled timeout, couldn't get it, so the penalty is against A&M. Well, offenses live for this play right here. You have a cover two. The safeties are both going to go on top to double team the wide receivers to the middle. It's wide open, and no problem for Metcalf to beat a linebacker here. Look how much room he has. Stafford read it perfectly. Veteran quarterback hit him, and he just runs. When he gets the ball, he is trouble. But again, it's that offense right there. They put it in. They have the ability to beat defenses with the passing game now, and that's helped Texas considerably. Jackie Sherrill is on the field, and he is really upset. He thought, I believe, that his team was entitled to a timeout as uh, they were signaling for it, trying to get it. That's what he's saying. Confusion and fraction by the defense. The player was not off the field. The penalty will be declined. It's a first down. That was a case where AM was going to one of the more complicated defenses. They were yep. changing personnel. They went to that cover two, the splitting safeties, and they got burnt big on that play. Did they ever? And Jackie Sherrill pleading his case, but it's obvious uh, he had 12 men on the field at the time of the play. Although that man running off, Sadler did want the timeout and didn't get it. So it's first and 10 Texas inside the AM 35. Metcalf again. Trying to use his speed to get outside, and Holland is all over him. Holland had plenty of help. A lot of white and red out there. One thing about the Texas offense that's interesting, and you'll notice it a lot of times when they go up to the line of scrimmage, they use two plays. It's called a check with me system. Brett Stafford will go up, he'll have two plays. He chooses between one or the other. That's at least 60% of the time. That's what he did on that, that read earlier on the when he split the safeties to Metcalf. He read it correctly. Loss of a yard on the last carry, and we are starting to get rain here in Austin. Nelson was the man in motion, and it's a reverse to Nelson. Stafford in front trying to throw a block. 20. 16-yard line. And Texas A&M fooled on the reverse, and Fred Akers is pulling it all out of the playbook. Well, they set this up beautifully. One way to beat a great lateral pursuit team is to make them over-pursue, and that's what they're going to do here. They're giving the ball to Metcalf, and they're all running to the top of the screen. They hands back to Nelson, and they're all out of position now. Look at that nice wall they set up for blocking. Stafford's trying to catch up with Nelson, but doesn't quite do it. Well, Stafford really took a shot when he finally got in there, too. It's a first and ten Longhorns as the Umbrellas come out here at Memorial Stadium. Only one wide receiver this time. Now they split two. And number they'll give it to Norris, the fullback. Sadler was in on the stop, pick number 99 at 273 pounds out of Atlanta, Georgia. Preseason All-American. Fred Akers has handled this with a lot of class this year. He has been under the gun constantly. His team was embarrassed in the loss to Oklahoma. But he just hangs in there and says he's not about to apologize for his coaching or his team. And he'd love to win this. And now we've got a timeout called by the Longhorns on a second and eight with 2.46 to go first quarter. We have no score, but the Longhorns are driving. You might get caught out in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery, but I won't. This is a Delco maintenance free battery. And when this green eye is showing, it means I've got all the starting power I need, up to 770 cranking amps. If you think your battery's fading fast, I'd start thinking Delco. Now through January 3rd, get a $5 rebate on most Delco batteries. See a participating AC Delco retailer for details. Never wait for trouble. Make a 
Two minutes and 46 seconds left to go in the first quarter in a scoreless grudge match between Texas A&M and Texas, and the Longhorns have the ball at the 15-yard line of the Aggies. Second down, eight yards to go. Stafford, here comes the blitz. Got away from one, two, dumps it off to Clark, his tight end. And Clark will still lose eight yards as Brooks makes the tackle, but it could have been much worse, and Stafford really had to scramble. They brought everybody. Uh, particularly Johnny Holland, number 11. Very, very fast. He's going to run Stafford down here. and almost takes him for a big, big loss. Stafford has the presence here to turn around and deliver this ball. They're still going to lose eight yards by the time he gets it to the tight end. But that just shows you Holland. When Holland blitzes, he has such speed. He's an inside backer, but he runs like an outside backer. So now it's third and 15 for Texas. And the officials will stop the clock. It looked like Texas A&M called the timeout, and they did. So with another timeout and 2.07 to go, first quarter, we'll be back in Austin, Texas, after this. Noxzema presents another close shave. In 1941, Joe DiMaggio set the record for hitting safely in 56 consecutive games, but he almost lost it after only 23 games. Jolton Joe had come to the plate four times without a hit, and his streak appeared to be ended. But the Yanks tied the game and sent it to extra innings, giving Joe another turn at bat. We'll be right back. You know what I love about his heavy beard? I love how it deepens his eyes, traces his jawline, flaunts his dimple. But when I want to get close... Noxzema announces the first shave cream for heavy beards. Its special energized foam protects against cuts and irritation as it turns that sandpaper into silk. Know what I really love most? Getting close. From Noxzema, the first shave cream for heavy beards. The crowd tenses as he steps to the plate. He delivers a solid single to the left to keep his record alive, a record which still stands today. A great moment and another close shave from... Saturday, see a college football special live from Japan. Stanford takes on Arizona in the Coca-Cola Bowl, Saturday night on ESPN. Texas now facing a third and 15 after the loss when Stafford scrambled and hit his tight end Steve Clark. They don't want to lose any more yardage and get pushed back to a, a very difficult field goal try. Stafford, five out of seven, 60 yards so far. Under pressure, he wants it all, and he's got Jones! Couldn't hold it in the end zone. Jones covered very, very well down there. This should, have, this should have been a touchdown, Mike. Had Stafford delivered it sooner and delivered it lower, he had the seam. It's an excellent call by the coach, but you see, he had to throw it over the defensive lineman. That's what stopped this play, and he jumped early again. Jones just doesn't have his timing yet as a receiver, but had he been able to throw that ball harder, and lower, he would have had it in the scene before the safety got over there. Gary Jones was the man who had the good coverage on him. And now Ward will come in to try a 39-yard field goal. Ward with 57 career field goals, the Southwest Conference record. And he is an outstanding kicker. Got it all. And the Longhorns get on the board first with a minute 57 to go first quarter. Smiles all around on the Texas bench. Our live presentation of college football continues next Saturday, and we offer up, uh, offer up a doubleheader for you. First live CFA action between Brigham Young and San Diego State, followed by a Pac-10 battle featuring Arizona and Stanford, and it's really a road game. They're playing in Tokyo. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock with a Mercury College football scoreboard show. Very important, I think, Pat, for Texas to get on the board. Did I say next Saturday? I'm sorry. Those are coming up this Saturday. That's two days from now. Uh, I think it's very important for Texas to get on the board first. Well, that it'll allow them to play, a, you know, maybe tighten up their defense, not gamble so often if they can get the lead. The problem they're going to have is uh, they're not going to be able to go to a running game. They're going to have to continue throwing those short passes. R.C. Slocum, defensive coordinator for AM. Right now, uh, Texas is beating this team with some smart reads by Stafford and... You know, you have a weapon like Metcalf, you send him long, you send him short, it's tough to defend. 
Texas will kick it off. Here's Ward. An impressive drive for Texas. Ten plays. It went 68 yards. They got to the 15-yard line. Took three minutes and 38 seconds, and Ward capped it off with a field goal. There is Bevo. Well, they do some uh, they do some nasty things in the week before this game. They say uh, all the Aggies have Bevo burgers all week. <laughs> Well, those are some serious tusks. Those aren't longhorns. Texas to kick it away. Ward, who had the field goal, now 58 for his career. 19 out of 23 this year. Valentine at the five. Cut down as he got to the 21-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline and Tim Brando. Mike and Pat, you can really feel the pressure of this one. There was as much verbiage in today's local newspaper as much as you'd find in a pro wrestling match. Now, John Hagee, who is the uh, strong safety for Texas, had much of that verbiage written up. I should mention, Hagee was penalized twice in the Texas Tech game, and one of those penalties really cost Texas the game. He said some statements today that not only ridiculed many of the A&M players, but really insulted anyone close to Texas A&M. It's that kind of a series. Murray. Bernstein again is big tight end and he's tripped up by Jeffries. Bernstein, they love that pattern and it's very tough to cover. Well, you said it earlier, he feels like he's a running back and he played it in his past and that's why he's so tough to stop. He's able to beat people with his speed and after he catches the ball, he's always a threat. A lot of tight ends just run over people. He can run around, almost breaks his tackle here. He goes down. As long as Murray has time to pick him out, he's going to be able to hit him. Good tackle by Jeffries and this is a good Texas secondary. First and ten. Texas going with five defensive backs. Vic picked up and unceremoniously dumped by Mike January. At 230 pounds, he picked up the 221 pounder and flattened him. Well, you'll never see a better tackle than this. I mean, he absolutely perfect form. He picked him up and threw him back all by himself. He had no help on this. Mike January, right here, just catches him in midair. Look at that. And Timmy just said it is like wrestling out here, and that's a good example of it. That was a pin. Second and eight. Murray, near sideline. He's got Woodside out of the backfield. And Woodside gets up to about the 43-yard line. Well, that's the other ball control weapon we haven't seen much of yet tonight is Keith Woodside out of the backfield. Like Bernstein, he catches a lot of underneath routes, and then he picks up extra yardage with his running ability. That's why Texas A&M is so difficult to stop. They come at you in so many ways you don't expect. I think Texas has made up its mind. You can pick away, but you're not going to get deep, and we'll find out if A&M has the patience to do it. First down, Aggies. Murray to throw on first down. Has good protection this time and throws complete. Inside the Texas 40 to the 37-yard line is Tony Thompson, January, and Peavy in on the tackle. And that time he went downfield and threw a bullet. Well, he had all kinds of time, and you just can't let Kevin Murray sit back there and burn you like this. He'll find Thompson crossing, and the linebackers were up close. They didn't get into their drops good enough, and he had an opening, and he delivered it. That's the thing about Murray. He is not a running quarterback. He's a straight drop back, and he'll fire the ball at you. 19-yard gain for a first down. Woodside trying to cut outside, and the play is stopped. Before it got off, we have some kind of a procedure call. Check it out for you. And it is procedure against AM. You know, Mike, you mentioned the fact that uh, Texas is saying to AM, you you're going to have to be patient to beat us. You're going to have to beat us underneath. And I talked to the coaches yesterday from Texas, and they said what happened against Arkansas and the reason AM lost was because Kevin Murray just got frustrated. They kept dropping eight people and playing mm -hmm. zones. And have a dead ball, ball, ball start, offense, first down. He started forcing the ball, and that's how Arkansas knocked off AM. Well, we remember the first game that we saw him against LSU. Uh, they really gave him a tough night. Because that defense has given a lot of people a tough night. Texas trying to do it right now. Murray, excellent stats, but only 62 yards on those six completions. Draw play to pick. To the 30-yard line. Good hit by Braggs. Peavy. 
Vick is quite a running back. He's a heck of a fullback. We mentioned earlier that Thomas Aldridge, 97, takes an outside release on his pass rushes all the time, and they'll just cut right underneath him. And the thing about Roger Vick that's special is he's a fullback that runs like a tailback. Look at the speed he has there. That is the end of the first period of play from a sold-out Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. It's the Longhorns 3, the Aggies nothing. Pure, natural glass. Protects the goodness and taste you want for your baby. And with recyclable glass, you can see that the good things that come in glass come just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers naturally. At Braun, we believe simple is better than complicated. Order is better than confusion. Quiet is better than loud. Only through superior design can one achieve superior performance. It is this philosophy that has helped make Braun the number one selling foil shaver in the world. What's also helped is that no other shaver gives you a closer shave. Braun, now available in America. It's time for another Safeco Insurance pop quiz. Here's today's question. Safeco's new Quality Plus homeowner's insurance is a smart idea because A, it insures home replacement costs, B, it covers the full value of your contents, or C, it comes in five decorator colors. If you answered C, you can leave the room. But if you answered A or B, you may be able to get more protection for your money with Safeco. The smart choice. You know, life's too short to worry about impressing other people. I mean, have you ever been really impressed by a person's credit card? What matters about a credit card is how it impresses me. MasterCard gives me what I want, and anything is possible. It goes where I want to go. Could be. Timbuktu. <laughs> when I want, day or night. <laughs> Don't talk to me about impressions. <laughs> Give me possibilities. MasterCard. Master the possibilities. There's a fan who already has made up her mind who is the favorite in this game and who she's going to root for. I think she likes Fred Akers, too. I was yeah. looking at her. She probably does. Second and three. A&M goes for the first down with Vick up the middle. Another tackle by Stephen Braggs, number six in the middle of that pack. And Braggs has been in a lot of tackles, and they are going after each other with a little extra emotion. Bernstein and Braun are the first ones to get in it. Take a look at the statistics in the first quarter. Pretty even ball game. You can see total yards, only 10 yards different. Time of possession very close. Not much to choose from, but Texas got the only points out of it on a 39-yard field goal. Murray to throw on first down to Woodside. Complete, driven out of bounds. Tackled by Peavy. Some of the core cadets on the sideline. Tradition-rich school is Texas A&M. Want to update some scores for you. One in particular, and it's this. Closer than expected, even without Testaverde. 16-3, the Hurricanes. Second down, three yards to go after a gain of seven. Vick and Woodside to the back. This is Woodside trying to cut it outside. And a great play by Braggs. Stephen Braggs just wouldn't let him outside and then kept forcing him back and made the tackle himself. He is a tough, versatile player who's had to play both corner and safety this year. Well, the secondary is very important for Texas tonight. They've made a lot of big tackles already. Braggs is right in the middle of the screen right here. He's just going to take Woodside, and he's just not going to let him get outside. That shows his speed, not only his speed, but his tackling ability. He kept position, wouldn't let him get wide. Well, he was just a shadow. Every step that Woodside took, Braggs was right with him. Now third and seven, and Murray sends two wide receivers to the far side. Four-man rush, plenty of time. Now pressure, and they got it. Sacked at the 32-yard line, and it's Blake Brawner with his eighth sack of the season. 
Well, Bronner gets credit for this sack, but I'll tell you, it was a strategy on defense right there. They doubled Bernstein. They doubled the other wide receiver. He had nowhere to go. Murray's just going to stand in the pocket. He can't let go. Double coverage, and Bronner's going to make that tackle. I know he's a happy senior. He was fired up for this game. And if he hadn't gotten him, Thomas Aldridge, 97, would have. And there's a good look at Bronner. And now they will go for the field goal with Scott Slater, another brilliant kicker. This is a 48-yard attempt. And as you can see, he will tie the Southwestern Conference record and break the school record if he can hit this one. Plenty of distance. But it's wide. That ball would have been good from 60, but he left it wide to the right. And Texas clings to a 3-0 lead with 13.02 to go first half from Austin, Texas. shape the fit or the fit gallery by hager experience an incredible advance in gillette shaving smoothness atra plus the plus is the white luber smooth strip that releases lubricants as you shave you never felt anything smoother atra plus by gillette the essence of shaving no one really knows how your skin got sensitive but if it is Try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. New Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. Tonight's live college football special is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda Value. Mike Patrick, Pat McAnally, and Tim Brando. Glad to have you with us on a Saturday night from Austin on ESPN. It's been an excellent ball game with 13.02 to go first quarter. Texas with a football and a 3-0 lead. Nelson in motion. Metcalf in another reverse to Nelson. Not this time. It worked once, but Steve Bullitt, number 66, saw it coming this time. Well, defensive players get burnt once and they get chewed out on the sideline. They're probably not going to get burnt again. Well, I don't think you should run uh, reverses this uh, close together. No question about it. He has nowhere to go on this play. Bullet did get burnt on the last play, and this time he stayed home. And uh, maybe you go to double reverse the next time because yeah. they might have been able to go the other way, but not this way. Loss of five, second and 15. Stafford fumbled the ball and has to fall on it. And the officials say he got it back, but they'll lose another five or six. Mistakes have hurt Texas dearly this year. They have not made a turnover tonight, and it's something Fred Akers will try to stay away from. Well, this just looks like a bad exchange. The ball went right through his hands and hit him in the stomach. He was very fortunate that the ball fell down where he could get it and that Texas A&M didn't have any pressure on him early because he was in no position to fall on that ball. I think he got it with his legs eventually. Yeah. Jackie Sherrill looking for another cotton bowl bit. Third and now 20. Stafford unloads in a hurry. All the way to the AM 27 yard line. Chet Brooks has to make the tackle on Evan Nelson, the man who was burned a couple of plays ago on the reverse, and Stafford hit him right on the numbers. I can't believe third and long again. Texas AM gets caught in a trick defense. They're going to get burnt. Here's a, a view of their defense. They'll drop back to play in zone all the way. But the safety does not get in a position to take away that play. He should have been over in the middle of the field more. Helped the wrong side. He guessed to the right. He should have been more in the left or in the middle of the field where he could have taken that throw. Easy completion. No way they should have been able to get that ball in. Longest reception of the season for Nelson. Only his seventh catch. And Stafford fumbled it again. Metcalf picked it up on a bounce. And really gets dumped on the sideline. Holland was over there, and Brooks took his feet from under him, out from under him, number 27. Oh, that's two uh, two fumbled snaps in three plays. Well, part of the problem is Alan Champagne, again, is their second or third string center. They're going, you know, they're not going with their regular player, and that makes it tough on a quarterback sometimes. 
trickling in, a, in an emotion-packed game. And they were fortunate here. Metcalf picked the ball up, but a nice tackle right there by Brooks. It's two tackles in a row he's made. A loss of four on that play, second and 14. Boy, Stafford has really been impressive. And Texas is doing it with an injury riddle lineup. Stafford quarterback draw, big play. Just tripped up as he got to the 24-yard line. Saving tackle by James Flowers. And when he took off, there was a gaping hole. That's a well-designed we, offense, Pat. Well, we said this at the beginning of the game that Brett Stafford loves to run this quarterback draw. They're going to try to call it four or five times a game because he's such a good runner. Here's Johnny Holland right in the middle of your screen. Going to get shielded and blocked right there by Norris. Norris with a nice play. Save that. But again, they're dropping back in those zones so deep that Stafford's going to have some running room. Game of seven for Stafford. And it's third and seven for the Longhorns. Leading 3-0 and bidding for more. Stafford doesn't like what he sees and uses his second timeout here in the first half. 9.56 to go in the second quarter. It's Texas 3, Texas A&M nothing. The time right now. The place, your Mazda dealers. The event, Goodbye 86. We're saying goodbye with goodbyes on all our 87s, 323s, 626s, even our X7s. And right now, special factory cash incentives can save you hundreds on 87 B2000 trucks. Buy now while sales tax is still deductible. But hurry, the end is almost here. So visit your Mazda dealer for a good buy now. Don't let time run out. Fact. Americans are investing their money in unprecedented numbers. Fact. Investing is easy. Making money is hard. Fact. If you're not a professional, you're an amateur. Before you invest, talk to a professional. Ask a securities broker about the investment products of Kemper Financial Services, mutual funds, money market funds, unit trusts, life insurance and annuities, real estate. Kemper Financial Services, a concern for your future. Back in Austin on Thanksgiving night, Tim Brando down on the sidelines. Texas leading it three to nothing. Eric Metcalf is, of course, the running back that Jackie Sherrill was most concerned about. During the last series, the offensive series for Texas A&M, R.C. Slocum, the defensive coordinator, talked to his linebackers. He said, guys, read your keys and don't let number two beat you. Since that time, they've been watching Metcalf closely. That enabled Nelson to be open down the seam, and it also enabled Stafford to get something done on the quarterback draw, Mike and Pat. Thank you, Tim. It is third and seven right now. Here comes the blitz. Stafford unloads to Metcalf. And he can't get away from Kelm at the 25-yard line. Larry Kelm with a saving tackle out here. Good job by Stafford just to unload. Well, this will keep him in field goal range too, Michael. That was an excellent throw. He read the safety blitz. Metcalf just reads hot on this play. He sees the backer coming, so he just breaks out to the flat. And they're hoping he can go one-on-one -on -one and get rid. If he'd have caught this ball clean, he had a better chance. But Kelm with a nice tackle. When you're one-on-one -on -one with Metcalf, you're in a tough situation. But Kelm got the job done. Jeff Ward, who has been good from 39, will try from 42. And he pulled that one badly. Did not get much of that one at all. And Texas will hold its 3-0 lead with 9 minutes, 11 seconds to go first half. We'll be back in Austin after this. The time, right now. The event, Goodbye 86. The offer, Mazda's SE5 Plus 5. It's the 6995 SE5 Plus $650 worth of extras at no extra charge from Mazda. You get a bed liner, mud guards, sliding rear window, floor mats, even an AM FM stereo. A $650 value at no extra charge. So see your Mazda dealer for an SE5 Plus 5 now. But hurry, the end is almost here. Don't let time run out. Oklahoma halfback Spencer Tillman talks about the college experience. One of the greatest orators of our time once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not determined in time of convenience and content, but rather in time of trial and contempt. 
Those inspired words of Dr. Martin Luther King typify the college experience. Added to that, the pressures of playing major college sports makes it that much more difficult. But like life, those who endure count those trials as major stepping stones in their pursuit of excellence. The preceding brought to you by the College Football Association. Texas, three. Texas A&M, nothing. Nine minutes, 11 seconds to go in the first half. A&M back with a football, and Roger Vick goes up the middle, tripped up as he reaches the 29-yard line. And it was Brauner who knocked him down. Our attendance tonight, 79,623. I think both of these teams could be 0-10, and, and you draw 79,000. Well, they are fired up. I'll tell you, these Aggie fans, they come in there, they dominate noise-wise in the stands. <laughs> and they don't sit down. One of the great traditions in college football, that 12th man for A&M. Second and seven for the Aggies right now. Murray to throw. Four-man rush under pressure again. Throws for Woodside. Nice catch. They'll only pick up about three. And Jeffries and Senegal were right there. But excellent. Even though Murray is completing his passes, but excellent coverage by Texas in the secondary. Well, I think what you said about being patient is right. They're giving them these short completions, but they haven't scored points yet. There's a good look at the crowd. It came in a Memorial Stadium tonight. Well, there's no seats. It's packed on both sides. Second and a yard. Make it third and a yard. Vick. And he got it. Number 43, Roger Vick. Senegal made the tackle again along with Mike January. Well, A&M's right side of their line, Fontenot, Land, and Bernstein are all very good. They're strong. This is where they want to run the ball when they have short yardage and goal line. As you can see, they're going to take their men. The stalemate's good enough. Bronner got double teamed, which took him out of the play. Vic found the opening pickup, or Woodside picked up the first down. Land was about 347. He didn't need any help. Murray again to Woodside. This time he's flattened by Jeffries and couldn't hold on to the ball. Just superb coverage in the secondary by Texas tonight. So many hits by Jeffries and Braggs. They're up there. They're they're gambling. They're playing those short passes. They're not giving them. You know, some of the plays they'll give them, but they're, they're taking away a lot of those plays just by being up there playing aggressively. Murray is 8 out of 11, but he only has 76 yards in the passing game and no points. They've gone downfield once, and that was to a back. There's a good look at Marshall Land, number 77, and he's just not big and good. He's going to go for his master's and Ph.D. in sociology. Second and ten. Flag is down as they dump it over the middle again. And oh, it's no. intercepted. And now the officials were blowing the whistle during the middle of the play and saying that uh, there was no play. What a break for AM, though. That was an interception. Sure was. Bernstein just threw oh. that ball up in the air. He mishandled it. It was intercepted by Texas. Ooh, those one of those penalties they'd rather not have go five yards the other way. They had the ball. So they'll mark off five against AM. Big break there. Well, AM just going to dump the ball. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Second down. AM going to their little tosses to Bernstein underneath. It's the secondary. Three deep. You can see middle safety and the outside corners playing his own. They dump it. And he just, it's like volleyball. He dug it up into the air and it was intercepted, but it didn't count. So it's second and 15 as the play is called back. Murray with time this time and throws an incomplete out of the hands of Tony Thompson. Griffin was the closest man to it, but Thompson just couldn't hold on to a bullet for Murray. Well, Thompson's been open a couple times tonight across the middle, and the reason is they're doubling Bernstein when they can. They're going to help on Woodside whenever possible, and they're going to take Walker away, so naturally the flanker's going to be open. And he's found them so far, one catch, one drop. That's where they're vulnerable. The great statistic, uh, they just had up 10 touchdowns and one interception in the latest streak for Murray on the season. 16 touchdowns and eight interceptions. And that's a nice ratio to be able to keep. Right now, he faces third and 15. Texas with only one linebacker and six defensive backs in there. And Duncan showing blitz. And they come, and Duncan got there. Almost intercepted, intended for Thompson, but it was Dwayne Duncan, number 48, who was showing blitz and came full out and nailed Murray. Well, they blitzed Duncan, but they also ran a game with the defensive line. It's going to be a twist right in the left of your screen, right there. Bronner comes behind the defensive tackle. 
And that opened up Duncombe. That's a nice job by that defensive line and the linebacker core working together. So A&M will have to punt, and Todd Schantz gets off another rocket. Drives Metcalf all the way back to the 10. Nice return by Terry Metcalf out across the 30-yard line after a 57-yard punt, a 22-yard return. Texas in possession when we come back. We just have to discuss our holiday gift list, Tom. It's kind of early, isn't it? This year, we're getting a head start. Look, most of these people are sports fans, right? Uh, right. Well, here's the perfect holiday gift, a gift subscription to the Sporting News. Great idea, a gift that keeps on giving all year, 52 weeks, 52 big issues. Actually, it's 55. 52 weeks of the regular issues, plus the baseball preview, football preview, and the basketball preview. And now we can give the Sporting News at a special low rate. Want to please the fans on your list? Get a pencil, because here's a friend with a money-saving half-price offer. Get your list and call now, toll-free, 1-800-221-2100. You'll order 55 issues of the Sporting News for three installments of only $9.15. Each subscription includes three special preview issues at no extra cost. This is a savings of one-half off the regular subscription rate. So order for yourself, too. Call now, 1-800-221-2100. The rain falls on Memorial Stadium, but the Texas fans probably don't even know it. They're very happy, up three to nothing, and their team has played impressively in the first half, especially Stafford, who throws complete. Stafford hasn't missed anybody. That time it was Gabriel Johnson, Flowers, and Jones made the tackle. Let's get out of the sideline and Tim Brando. In the truest form of sidelines with Tim Brando, it is raining again, but now it's serious, fellas. And by the way, Texas fans are throwing oranges, not because they're going to the Orange Bowl, but because that's where they want A&M to go. If they lose, that's where they head. But you know, Pat, I was looking, this is a raw orange. Uh, I, was, uh, I was looking more for either a well done or at least a burnt orange to be thrown. <laughs> And Brando getting into the pun game with Mr. McAnally. Burn Orange, of course, being the Texas Colors, first and ten. That appealed to me, that joke. Oh. This game is too good for puns. Hunter. Well, it'd be into different. The ball game for the first time. It'd be different if it was the Naval Academy playing, but wouldn't it? Hunter uh, missed five games with a groin injury. He was the starting tailback this year. Metcalf came on. Edwin Simmons has also played a lot. But they had a lot of hopes for Hunter, who has uh, great speed. Got six on that carry, and it's second and four. It's a sophomore out of Odessa, Texas. A&M showing blitz, and Holland comes, and Metcalf trying to get outside. Cut it back to the 40, may have the first down inside the Aggie 40-yard line. So impressed with what Texas has been able to do both offensively and defensively tonight. Well, offensively, again, they're coming up to the line of scrimmage with this check with me system. That means the quarterback's going to check to one run or another run or a variety of passes. So he has the option, and Stafford's very experienced up there. He's making the right choices. There, Holland, number 11, was sneaking in. He was going to blitz. So he went to an audible where he went outside quickly to Metcalf, and they got outside and picked up the first down. Five minutes, 44 seconds, and counting in the first half. Texas scored one field goal, drove a long way in position to make another but missed. Hunter, fumble, and it looked like A&M got it. And the battle royal goes on inside. The officials have not made a call, now they have. Aggie football at the 31. And Johnny Holland is the man on the bottom of the pile. And Fred Akers looks on in disgust as his team has its first turnover of the ball game. Well, Texas has lost five games this year and they've had 17 turnovers in those games. And here it is. Really no reason to fumble this ball. He got stripped, but he's got to hold on to it. When you go up the middle like that, you just can't give the ball up. And that's why Texas has had a tough year. Again, when they lose, it's because they turn the ball over. So the Aggies will have five minutes and 27 seconds to go here in the second quarter to get on the scoreboard. They have been shut out so far. They'll go with Vic on the toss, and Vic is bombed in his own backfield, and it looks like the ball came loose. He may have gotten it back. Big hit by Aldridge. Well, this rain may be affecting some of the ball handling, but really what's going right now is big hits right here. Penetration, that'll stop any running game, and that was a fumble. That was definitely a fumble. Aldridge made oh. the play, but Vic got it back. 
But Aldridge, again, he gambles. He goes outside all the time. He makes big plays. Sometimes he'll get burnt. Very tough to run outside of him because of the way he sets up. There's Johnny Holland. Great player. Second and 14 for a and and they have been throttled except for the short passing game. There's Vic on the delay. Forget it. He's wrapped up by Steve Llewellyn. Let's go to Bristol and check in with Larry Burnett. All right, Mike, the Fiesta Bowl officials have got to be smiling tonight. It looks as though Miami is going to end up undefeated and play Penn State in Tempe for the national championship. Third quarter, Alonzo Highsmith takes it in easily. Miami without Vinny Testaverde leading East Carolina now 23-3. It's in the third in Miami. And as you can see, Miami's starting to roll a little bit tonight, and they are going to be going to the Fiesta Bowl. Well, that's that front four of Texas. Penetration, making the plays. You don't have to blitz when you have linemen like that. Third and 17. Murray dumps it off. Vic out of the backfield. Got by one tackle, but can only get back to the 31-yard line, not even the original line of scrimmage. And Hagee was the man who came up to get it. And Texas A&M will have to kick it away, and the partisan Texas crowd is loving every minute of it, as is Fred Akers. And why not? Shantz, who has punted the ball very well, is on. Well, they were close to blocking it last time. I think they're coming again. Ten-man rush. They don't get there, and not a good kick this time. But it will take an A&M bounce. And goes out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. A 50-yard kick for Todd Shantz after a 13-yard roll. Let's go down to Tim Brando again. Tim? Fellas, if atmospheric conditions mean anything in this game, and I think they do, Texas, with its three points, looms very big right now with a tremendous advantage with 319 left. And after venturing to both sides of the field, I can tell you that the Texas sidelines is pumped up with the three-point lead, even after the Hunter fumble. The A&M sidelines is very concerned that coaches are beginning to feel that they're giving Texas the confidence necessary to pull off an upset. Tim, I have to agree with you. Uh, if you let a team in an emotional game like this stay in it long enough, they're really going to start to believe that they can beat you. Day in motion. And a whistle. I don't think they got the play off in time, and it looks like it'll cost them five. Well, they're going out of that conservative defense. Holland is blitzing play after play now. AM's going back to tradition. They're going to try to, they're not going to give the plays to Texas anymore. And it's a procedure call that will cost the Longhorns five. But you look at Texas right now, they have a 3-0 lead. They've missed a field goal, uncharacteristic of Jeff Ward. They fumbled when they're inside the 30-yard line on the last series. They've moved the ball very well. They sure have. have. A dead ball, ball start, offense, first down. So it's a first and 15. And if they keep gambling, and Brett Stafford's able to make the right choice up there on the line of scrimmage, a and could get turned big. Stafford, a junior. Holds all kind of records already. The option this time in a hurry to Metcalf. Holland makes the tackle at the 15-yard line. Howard was also out there, but Holland, number 11, was the man who brought him down. Well, this play does not work because Stafford doesn't get any pressure on him. He pitches the ball too early. And Johnny Holland is just so fast, again from the middle. He's just skittering along the line of scrimmage. Now he'll just run Metcalf down. Metcalf down. Look at that. Took an angle and took him right away. But again, Stafford didn't get any pressure on himself. They didn't pick him up. He pitched it too early. Johnny Holland did the rest. Texas with only 47 yards on the ground so far. The running game has not been their long suit this year. Stafford, quarterback draw. Doesn't get much after about the 17-yard line. Howard. Got over there along with Chet Brooks. It's the second time they tried to run it. Both times it looked very good as soon as he took off. But the AM defense has closed quickly. Clock running with 2.13 to go in the half. And Texas facing third and 11. Coach, what would you do here? Uh, would you put the ball up on uh, third and 11 or would you let the clock run? Oh, I'd go for it. I think I'd go with the crossing route right here. They've been able to burn him earlier. Why give it up? Get, have another chance to score. Texas is three out of six on third down. And Stafford wants to throw. Bombs away. And it's overthrown. Oh, he and had a touchdown. he had Karan Brown was out there by three steps. Oh, they just 
They just split this zone again. Uh, Corrington, the free safety, is not doing the job right now for AM. Oh, he's down in coverage. Well, anyway, they didn't have a free safety. That should have been six right there. He was way behind the coverage. I apologize to Kip Corrington. That was not him, the free safety. Laron Brown, a transfer from Tennessee, a 400-meter man, was out there running his 400 meters. The problem was Alex Morris, the strong safety, was playing free safety, just didn't get the drop. Harris with a high snap, or rather weights, kicking to Harris, and oh, did he bomb it. Harris driven all the way back to the 25-yard line. Got a picket line on the sideline, but he can't quite get there. Back shy of the 40-yard line. Waits rocketed one 57 yards. We have a minute 37 left to go in the half. The time right now. The place, your Mazda dealers. The event, Goodbye 86. We're saying goodbye with goodbyes on all our 87s, 323s, 626s, even our X7s. And right now, special factory cash incentives can save you hundreds on 87 B2000 trucks. Buy now while sales tax is still deductible. But hurry, the end is almost here. So visit your Mazda dealer for a good buy now. Don't let time run out. Know what I love about his heavy beard? I love how it deepens his eyes, traces his jawline, flaunts his dimple. But when I want to get close, Noxema announces the first shave cream for heavy beards. Its special energized foam protects against cuts and irritation as it turns that sandpaper into silk. Know what I really love most? Getting close. From Noxema, the first shave cream for heavy beards. A minute 37 left in the first half. A bit of a surprise. Texas leading Texas A&M 3 to nothing. In this series, don't be surprised if we see the Texas A&M offense look more to its wideouts. Pat, since that opening series where Bernstein was effective, we have not seen him as much a part of this offense for Texas A&M. Now we'll see if they've got a good two-minute drill, won't we? I agree with you. Right now, they need to get that ball to the wide receivers. They can't live with Bernstein. Murray to Bernstein. They'll gain about three yards on that, and Texas will let them have that play all night long. That's exactly right. In the two-minute offense, you're not going to live with two and three, four-yard gains. You've got to get the ball upfield. Bernstein has just set a season record for catches at A&M. He has 62 this season. Not all of them are for three yards. He averages almost 11 yards a catch. Murray in that two-minute drill goes sideline to Woodside. He's they say he stays inbounds, and now they will stop the clock as he got to the Texas 46. You can see A&M with two of its timeouts left. Clock at a minute 10 in this hurry-up offense, and this might be good for A&M. The regular offense has not worked all that well tonight. Decision time for the Texas defensive coordinator. Is they going to gamble or are they going to play conservatively? Once again, the short pass again complete at the 39-yard line. Woodside out of the backfield. There is a penalty flag down near the line of scrimmage in the area where you would normally expect a hold. Texas came with another straight four-man rush, and they've done a good job getting pressure on Murray. And it's a face mask. Must have grabbed one of those defensive linemen. 97, Thomas Aldridge is the pressure guy. Right at the top of your screen, he usually rushes outside. This time he comes inside. Now watch number 50, right in the middle of your screen. Watch him go with that right hand, right to the face. Oh, yeah. Nice job by our cameraman there. No question about that penalty. Oh, he just hammered it. It was almost like a face mask and a personal foul. No wonder Aldridge goes on the outside most of the time. He yeah. comes inside, he gets drilled. It's a big penalty against A&M. Costing 10 on the play and the penalty. By the offense. First down. So they'll mark it back to the 40-yard line of AM. And it's a first and 25 with 104 left. And the crowd is really fired up. And the defensive linemen of Texas are helping them. Comes the rush on Murray again, almost blindsided. Oh, what, what a, a shot over the middle. The catch is made, but Jeffries leveled Shea Walker, who did a great job to hang on. Oh, what a shot. I don't know how he held on to this ball. Stephen Braggs has nailed some people in the first half. Murray again, and throws sideline. Nice catch by Walker at the 33. 
and they'll stop the clock getting out of bounds. Shea Walker never had time to recover after that hit, but he managed to make the catch. Now this will be the previous play. Right, this is the play before where Shea Walker holds on to this ball. They're just in their three deep zone, but here comes number six. Bragg just absolutely hammers him. How he held on to that ball, I'll never know. I know one thing, I probably would have been squirted, uh, squirting out of my head. <laughs> my head probably would have been rolling That's too. Right. 38 seconds left. It's first and 10. A&M on a drive. They're in field goal position now as Walker has it to the 10-yard line. Gang tackle there, but it'll be another first down for the Aggies. And they have all at once found Shea Walker. Well, Tim Brownell called that one from the sidelines. Nice job of spying, Timmy. They definitely decided to come out and hit their wide receivers, and that penalty may have helped them in the end, Mike. Got a timeout right now with 30 seconds to go. Here's a shot of the secondary again. They're going conservative. Texas decided to sit back into their zones. This time it's a cover two. Both safeties dropping right over the middle again. Wide open, and Murray delivered the ball. They didn't get enough pressure on him. You can't give those kind of throws time after time. Murray's now hit five in a row. He is 13 out of 18, 149 yards, and there is Scott Slater on the sideline. He missed from 48 earlier, hoping for a chance to tie it up. That is, if his teammates don't get it in for seven. This is really outside of the opening drive, the only time that A&M has been able to move the ball. But they're showing the versatility they have on offense. You know, they have Vic, Woodside, and Bernstein. We saw all those players early. Walker and Harris, their two wide receivers, haven't gotten the ball that often, although Walker has 36 catches this year. You know, they, they keep throwing those short passes, and suddenly the wide receivers will be open. Uh, you can't take everything away on defense. And Jackie Sherrill and the staff have done a good job of finding out what was not taken away and going to it. It's a first and ten situation for AM just outside the Texas 10. Murray wants Walker. Almost intercepted. Great defensive play by Tony Tillman. I'd like to see if he was in on this or not. Let's see if this is an interception or not. It sure was excellent, excellent coverage. Man to man. They're just going to lob the ball. Toughest position to be in as a defensive back. Man to man. No help. Let's see if he's in bounds. That isn't it. Oh, no, I didn't have control of the ball. I don't think he had control of the didn't ball. Control. Out. Very close, though. Looked like a good call by the official down in the corner of the end zone. Second and 10, 23 seconds left. Fred Akers encouraging that defense. Texas showing blitz, and here they come. They don't get there. And now Murray dumps it off to the six-yard line. Aldridge and Espinosa in on the tackle as Bernstein was uh, literally standing in the backfield after throwing a block. I don't know how he ever saw him on that play. That's just an <laughs> incredible vision of the field by Kevin Murray. Just found him. Almost got thrown for a big loss. And there is a flag down on the play with 13 seconds left. The flag was thrown at the five-yard line at the point of the tackle. Disregard the flag. The pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. The pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. Could it have been an illegal receiver downfield? Uh, and then it wouldn't count if the pass was, uh, in effect, a screen pass, which that was. That's what they call there. That's a nice job by the officials to get together, because that is a tough call to make and to retract. Third and five. 11 seconds. And A&M will use its final timeout of the half with 11 seconds. You know, the irony here is that A&M is really going to their short passing games. They got that 15-yard penalty, and that's when they started throwing to their wide receivers. Murray on the sideline talking with Jackie Sherrill. Coming up at halftime, we'll have Larry and Bino with first half highlights, and we'll also have an in-depth preview of Saturday's BYU-San Diego State game. Pat, Tim, and me will be out in San Diego, beautiful San Diego, California, for a Saturday night game, and the Western Athletic Conference title could be decided. San Diego State wins that one. They take it all. Brigham Young hopes for a win to keep it alive. They and Air Force, and you know the Air Force will be rooting for Brigham Young in that one. Well, BYU arguably is the most influential offensive uh, team in this 
decade, that along with Bill Walsh on the professional level, they brought the passing game to the college game and opened up the offenses everywhere. Here's the situation for AM. No timeouts left. If they don't get it in the end zone, they would not have time, or out of bounds, they would not have time to go for the field goal. Here comes the blitz, and they're all over Murray, and he has to throw it away. January came roaring through there and flattened Murray. Oh, that's Nobody of, touched him. Well, that's the type of play you get an interception on. Your quarterback gets hit right when he's delivering the ball. He didn't have two seconds on that play. A great job by January. The second time he has been all over Murray. Now Slater will come in to try one from 23 yards. He missed earlier from 48. He'd like to tie it up. And he got this one. Texas A&M with five seconds to go in the first half. Used the two-minute offense beautifully to get down in scoring position. And Scott Slater out of Fort Worth knocked it through to tie it at three. They say that Fred Aker's future will be announced, or at least decided, on Saturday here at the University of Texas. And you, you have to root for Fred Aker simply because of the way he has handled this. He has not won a lot of big games lately, but then that happens to a lot of coaches, and he's won nearly 75% of the games. Well, I think it's uh, really, this illustrates one of the shabbier sides of collegiate sports. I don't think alumni or reporters should be able to decide a coach's fate. He has won over 70% of his games. He's brought in a new staff this year. They have a lot of young players. The coaches are very excited about their prospects of recruiting. Because now the players want to go to Texas because they have a chance to play a lot of youngsters. So to deny him an opportunity to use the players he has, he's developed this year, I think it's wrong. Of course, the pressure is more on more than Fred Akers because there have been so many reports that uh, the Lost Dodds, the athletic director, was told if he didn't fire Fred Akers, they'd get rid of the Lost Dodds and anybody else it took uh, to get a new change in the football program. Well, alumni are important. You certainly want their support, but you don't want them in there deciding who your athletic director and your coaches are going to be. I think that's wrong. Uh, you, can't let them, uh, you can't let them buy the decision-making power. The 12th man kickoff team for Texas A&M. Good question here. Do they go ahead and kick it away? They've only given up the longest return. They've given up three years is 39 yards. Or do you have a little squib kick with only five seconds left? I think you go with the squib kick here. You don't want to give them an opportunity to set up a return, no matter how good you are. Just play it smart here. And naturally, no, they sir. do the other. They'll kick it into the end zone, and they'll bring it out. Kevin Nelson. And Nelson is back to the 26-yard line. And that shows confidence in your kickoff team that if you would squib it, all it would do was end the first half if you go ahead and kick it away anyhow. So that is the end of the first half as Bevo looks on from the sideline. It is 3-3, Texas, Texas A&M. We've got a great one from Austin. Right now, let's go back to Bristol and Larry Burnett. All right, guys, they have a good game going on there in Austin, Texas. Coming up here on the MetLife Halftime Report, we'll be taking a look at some of the big rivalries that will be renewed this Saturday in college football. We'll also take a look at some of the turkey tilts today in the NFL. It's all coming up as Bino Cook joins me on the MetLife Halftime Report. We're not a company. But we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines. The Army. The Navy. The Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Master? Quiet, I'm calculating. Isn't it dark in there? Not for my new Anilite Solar Calculator from Texas Instruments. You have a Texas instrument? Texas! Texas Instruments Anilite Calculator. Unlike other solar calculators, it works in almost... Anilite. Good and feel. The new line of Anilite Solar Calculators from Texas Instruments. Imagine the Prince of Darkness with a solar calculator. <laughs> There's a good chance you've got less than six inches of fiberglass insulation in your attic, which means you may not be as comfortable as you could be, and you're paying more for your heating bills than you should be. So add an extra...
extra layer of Owens Corning pink insulation because a warmer house makes for a cool cat. Owens Corning, we put your house in the pink. My new Olympus is the only autofocus SLR with a built-in flash. Like this. In case I want to shoot. Like this. The new Olympus OM77AF, the only autofocus SLR that does it all. Larry Burnett back here in the ESPN studios along with Bino Cook. Of course, one of the big games that we are tracking tonight is that game coming out of the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, where the Hurricanes of the University of Miami are trying to finish up their season undefeated, set up that big showdown in the Fiesta Bowl with Penn State for the national championship. They're taking on East Carolina tonight, and we've got highlights of that game for you. You'll get to see a nice shot of the Orange Bowl at night. And Vinny Testaverde fell off a motor scooter the other day, couldn't play tonight. So Jeff Toretta, the senior, threw only 29 passes all in his career at the University of Miami. Here, though, he goes to Alonzo Highsmith in the first quarter for a big gain of 39 yards. That set up a field goal to make it 3-0 Miami. In the second quarter, it's tied at 3. On the East Carolina 42, Toretta to Michael Irvin. He's got a touchdown. It's 10-3 Miami. And then later in the second, from midfield, Toretta wants to pass again, wants to go to Irvin again. Hits him at the 25. He is into the end zone. The point after touchdown was blocked. It was 16 to three Miami. Highsmith then later scored to make it 23 to three. East Carolina has scored recently and it is now 23 to 10 in the fourth quarter. A little bit closer than I think Jimmy Johnson and the Fiesta Bowl folks would like it at this point, but it looks as though Miami is gonna go undefeated. He's gonna like this outcome, uh, Coach Johnson, a lot better than the one two years ago on Thanksgiving Friday, which was the miracle pass by Doug Flutie. We are apt to forget many times what Johnson went through. Two years ago, it was brutal for him. He lost that Maryland game when Maryland was behind 2002 to three and one. He also lost this game to Boston College and then lost in the fading seconds in the Fiesta Bowl, ironically, to UCLA. He has come back now two years later, also had a good year last year, and now has a shot for the national title on January 2nd. It's unbelievable because two years ago, there was a lot of criticism for Johnson and he is now quiet, all the, you know, critics. I know it is early, but uh, if they go at it in the Fiesta Bowl with Penn State, who would you like in that game? Well, I, at this stage, I don't know. Be a tight it's game? It'll all be a very tight game. All right. One other game going on tonight that we've been keeping track of. You may not have even known they were playing. Clark College beaten by Alabama State, the final there. 21-6, to Alabama State comes up with the victory. When we come back on the MetLife Halftime Report, we'll be taking a look at some of the Thanksgiving Day games in the National Football League. That's coming up, so stay with us. The MetLife Halftime Report is being brought to you by Metropolitan Life and Affiliated Companies. Get Met. It pays. Payment Squadron. You mean the one that makes sure MetLife claim checks get delivered promptly? Yes, it's very important. Snoopy is really getting tough with his new recruits, isn't he? Only the best will do for MetLife customers. What happens to the birds who don't make it into the prop payment squadron? They go into advertising. Get Met, it pays. <laughs> oh, wow, does that pizza smell great? My nose wouldn't know. It's too stuffed to smell. Hey, you need a Hall. Hall's menthol liptus with vapor action penetrates deep into clogged nasal passages to help your stuffy nose feel clearer, while Hall soothes your throat to help your cough. See, Hall's vapor action really works. Yeah, now I'm ready to work on some pizza. For penetrating relief, get Hall's vapor action. How about 8 o'clock? Hydraulic. Well, let's try it one more time. At Texas A&M University, every victory means a lot. All right, that's what we're looking for. Three, three. That is our score at halftime, and of course the Arkansas Razorbacks and their fans standing by trying to find out what's going to happen in that game so they'll know whether their team is going to get a share of the Southwest Conference Championship and a shot at the Cotton Bowl or the Orange Bowl.
Just talked with their sports information director, Rick Schaefer, a short time ago. Ken Hatfield and his staff will be going up to the uh, facilities at uh, Arkansas University, up to the uh, sports uh, the football building, and they'll be awaiting a call from either the Cotton Bowl or the Orange Bowl immediately after tonight's game, so they'll find out where they are going, as we will, as the uh, game progresses. There were some games in the National Football League today. We want to take a look at some highlights, first of all, from the Packers game at Pontiac, Michigan, going against the Lions. Lions were leading by two touchdowns late in the third, but Randy Wright finds Walter Stanley all alone for the touchdown. It is now a 37-30 to 30 game. There's a fan up there, a Packer fan in Detroit. Fourth quarter after a Lion field goal. Here come the Packers again. Randy Wright to Paul out Carruth. He takes it in. Lions lead is now down to 40-37. Then less than a minute to play. Detroit forced to punt. Stanley was told to fair catch the ball by Forrest Gregg. Instead, here he goes, near sideline. No, oh, let's go the other way. He's going to take it up the sideline. Arnold has a shot at him. Uh, no, he doesn't. And there goes Walter Stanley, 83 yards for the touchdown. His third of the day. The Packers win a wild one on Turkey Day, 44 to 40 over the Lions. Green Bay now 3 and 10. Detroit now 5 and 8. Now, the other game this afternoon was played in Irving, Texas, at Texas Stadium. Dallas always likes to play on Thanksgiving Day. They always do well. Did they today, though, against the Seahawks? Second quarter, it's tied 7-7. David Craig to a diving Steve Largent. It's 14-7 Seahawks on their next possession. Craig throws to Byron Franklin for another score. And Tom Landry's squad trailed 24-7 at the half. 24-14 here in the fourth until Kurt Warner's 10-yard run puts it on the cake. The Seahawks win it 31-14. Dallas only their fifth loss in 19 Thanksgiving Day games. Both teams are now 7-6, and six, and you've got to wonder if the Dallas Cowboys are going to make it into the playoffs this year. When we come back, Beano and I are going to kick around some of the big rivalries coming up this weekend in college football. All that and more when the MetLife Halftime Report continues. What's the world-famous Metropolitan Life representative up to now, Charlie Brown? He wants to make sure people know that Metropolitan offers auto insurance, homeowners insurance, health insurance, and retirement planning, as well as life insurance. What's he got in mind? Good grief! Spectacular! Get met. It pays. I am losing control. I have a TV remote, a cable remote, a VCR remote. Doesn't anybody make a TV with one remote control for everything? Sure. Magnavox. This one comes with the universal remote. It controls the Magnavox TV and just about every brand of wireless, VCR, and cable. Magnavox controls Sony. And Zenith, and RCA, and Panasonic, and... Uh, I'll take the Magnavox, and you can take these. The universal remote. It's three controls in one. Nobody puts it together like Magnavox. Saturday, Auburn will play Alabama. That game will be at Birmingham, and the Tide needs a win to share the Southeastern Conference title with LSU and to get a shot at a possible Sugar Bowl berth. But when Auburn and Alabama play, the game is called the Iron Bowl. It is truly one of the great rivalries in college football. Bama leads that series 30-19 to 1. The Tide beat Auburn last year on a Van Tiffen field goal as time was running out. And Rob Martin reports that everybody in Alabama gets excited about this game. Well, almost everybody. There is the snap, the kick. It is in the air. It has tested. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. That play changed the outcome of the game. While it also changed most every Alabamian's life. Or did it? It means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> nothing at all. We don't have Thanksgiving or Christmas if Alabama loses. Cool, that drastic. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Oh, that hasn't really. It hasn't really. Do you no. not keep up with football? Yeah, I do, but not that much. <laughs> you have to put up with it 364 days if you lose, and it's just, and where I work, you just, it's hard to, you just got to win. It would hurt. It would hurt bad because I'm an Alabama fan. So as you can see, most Alabama Auburn fans live and die for that one Saturday in late fall. But are we too serious about a game? No, I don't think you can play it up too big. I don't think you can spend enough money or the media can write enough things or show enough things on the electric media to build it up uh, as big as it probably ought to be built up. It's just the biggest game in the world, that's all. There's no doubt Alabama-Auburn is the biggest rivalry. Rob Martin for ESPN. All right, that's a great rivalry. The LSU-Alabama 
situation has become a great rivalry. LSU says, why is the Sugar Bowl waiting till after that game? We deserve to be in there. Well, uh, if Alabama wins, I would not want to be on that committee that has to pick the team in Baton Rouge, uh, in, in New Orleans, because LSU, once it took care of Notre Dame last Saturday, they thought they would get the invitation. You keep hearing that the merchants want Alabama because they bring the money. The LSU fans come up the day of the game. It's a tough decision. I imagine the committee would like to see Alabama lose, and that takes, you know, <laughs> takes the onus off them. But it's going to be very tough for them to pick a team if Alabama wins. It's going to be a tough decision for obvious reasons. And if, if LSU doesn't get it, those fans have got a right to be mad, I would think. Well, I would, but if Alabama wins, uh, not as much as LSU because LSU did beat Alabama. If I were voting, I would take LSU because they beat Alabama head-to-head. -head. All right, some other big rivalries coming up this weekend in college football. The one that a lot of people say uh, has Ted Toler's job on the line has USC hosting Notre Dame. What's amazing about Jerry Faust, he beat Southern Cal three years in a row, and last year Notre Dame destroyed Southern Cal in a game that was somewhat even. Now Ted Toler's job is on the line. He has to win tomorrow. I believe the story of the, in the Herald Examiner in L.A. for the simple reason is that Mike McGee does want to make a change, and this puts the pressure on Toler. But Southern Cal could win this game quite easily. Notre Dame is shall we say, even with them, it's going to be a very difficult game for Notre Dame to win. USC always seems so stable and so successful. Is this a case of an athletic director coming in and saying, I want to go with my guys? They've changed their basketball program. Rod Dato is out as their baseball coach. Well, I think it, that is the case. You want the people around you, you hire, then they think you think they owe the allegiance to you. And I think that's the case with Mike McGee. He wants to make a change, head coach in football. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Early in the season, the two coaches who were in trouble were Fred Akers at Texas and Tolner at USC. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's the way it is. All right. One of the other big games coming up this weekend It's not going to do a whole lot to bowl situations or the polls for that matter, but Florida, Florida State, it's always a bit of rivalry. Yeah, Florida has been winning this series in the last couple of years, and Coach Bobby Bowden at Florida State is very concerned. He needs this win not to keep his job, but for recruiting purposes. Florida has slaughtered Florida State in the last couple of years, and it's at Tallahassee, and if Florida State's going to win, this is the perfect situation. It's going to be very difficult. This is the 11th year for uh, Coach Bowden, and he's done a tremendous job at Florida State. All right, the other one we want to talk about, Georgia taking on Georgia Tech. Well, uh, Georgia has lost the last two games in this series, and last year they lost a close one at Georgia Tech, and the fans, uh, how about them dogs, they want to win tomorrow, and I think, I mean Saturday, and I think Georgia Tech is going to have a very difficult time winning this game because of what happened the last two years. Two years ago, Georgia Tech went to Athens and won, and that's tough to do between the hedges. All right, so some big games to look forward to this weekend. We have got a football doubleheader coming up this weekend here on ESPN on Saturday night. We will start with BYU going against San Diego State, and then we're going to finish up with the Coca-Cola Bowl from Tokyo. That's got Stanford going against Arizona in that one. Now, that BYU game is going to be played at San Diego. So if San Diego State wins, they will clinch the Western Athletic Conference Championship and a berth in the Holiday Bowl. If BYU wins, San Diego State is out, and that WAC championship gets decided when BYU plays Air Force on December 6th. A BYU, once again, with another fine quarterback in Steve Lindsley. But the Cougars rushed for 454 yards last week. Yeah, they can still throw it, but in three of their last five games, they have rushed for more yardage than they have passed. What will they do this week? Let's ask. Certainly we like to throw the ball, and um, we have been running well lately, so I'm sure we'll do both. But I think to be successful against a team like San Diego State, then we'll have to mix it up and um, have to give them both a, a strong look running and passing as well. They know how to win, and, and they're very fundamentally a very, very sound football team and a good defensive football team, and they've always been the best offensive team in the conference. So, hey, they're going to be they're gonna be a whale of a ball club when we play them. I think we're going to have to stop their run. They have established a great running game in the last few, uh, you know, last year, the last couple of years, and I think we're going to have to stop that and uh, put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and turn the ball over a lot. They are a much improved team, and they are playing very consistently. They have improved their defense, and I think the combination of all those factors, plus playing in San Diego, uh, is going to make it a very exciting, it's going to make it a great ball game. We're a much improved defensive football team from what we were earlier in the year. And we're going to have to have that as well as a good, strong kicking game. We did have a couple of punch blocks the other day against 
Utah. We can't have that against uh, San Diego, so we've got to firm that up a little bit. But if we play like we can and execute like we can, then I feel very confident we win the game. Cougars with another fine quarterback, San Diego State. Denny Stoll's doing a good job there. You keep, you've been saying all night, that's going to be a good game. Well, it is going to be a good game, and it's good to have another team in the race besides BYU and Air Force. It's good for the league. We're going to see what happens with that one on Saturday night. Of course, we'll also be checking in as we have an 11 o'clock Eastern time start on the Coca-Cola Bowl from Tokyo Bino, and I'll be staying up late on that one for you. It's got Arizona going against Stanford. Should be a, a good football game. That's coming up at 11 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday night. We're going to be back in just a bit on the MetLife Halftime Report. Stay with us. We'll be going back to Austin, Texas for our game in just a bit. ESPN Home Video presents Teaching Kids Football with Bo Schembechler. This 75-minute video cassette is designed to show parents and youth coaches how to teach children the basic fundamentals and techniques of the sport in a safe and fun way. We want this to be a very positive experience for the young people that are playing for their first or second year of football. Bo begins the training with the there basics of go, offense go, and right, defense, hit, hit describes right, the kicking up. game, including yeah, punting and place kicking, and then moves into up. drills to improve on, agility. Bo also stresses the importance of mental attitude and safety to start kids off right in the game of football. This is not big-time football. It's really football, and it's played for fun. Teaching Kids Football with Bo Schembechler. Only $39.95. Order your copy today. Call 1-800-544-1000. Only from ESPN Home Video. It could be one of the best games of the year. North Carolina takes on UCLA. Live Monday night at 10 Eastern on ESPN. All right, we want to quickly update you on that game between the University of Miami and East Carolina. The Pirates had made it 23-10. to 10. Miami has scored again. This is Jeff Toretta filling in for Vinny Testaverde. He gets it to Brett Perryman. Perryman takes it all the way in for the touchdown. The Canes are now on top by the score of 29-10, to 10, and it certainly looks as though they will be facing Penn State on January 2nd in the Fiesta Bowl. Our game, of course, going on at Austin, Texas. It's a 3-3 tie. Bino said it was going to be a tight game, said that uh, Texas was going to come up a winner. We're going to have to wait and see if that happens. As we said, the folks in Arkansas are still waiting to find out what happens with that game as well. Southwest Conference and the Cotton Bowl bid on the line. Let's go back to Austin, Texas. In the heart of Texas, A&M and the Longhorns are knotted at three. Here at halftime, Tim Brando along with Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally. The Aggie line is doing it to it to start the third quarter. The fans are all around. It looks almost like a disco dance inside there with some of those fellas coming out. And obviously the fans need to get them pumped up at this point because as always, Texas, when they have been the underdog, is playing the favored team extremely tough. You get the feeling, and you hate to use the phrase, as the Longhorns make their way out onto the field, you hate to use this petty phrase, but he may be the Gipper tonight. They may want to win one for the Gipper. Right now, they're getting it done. The score is tied at three, and for the most part, the Texas defense has been dominant in this game, with the exception of that two-minute drill that really led to all of the statistics for Texas A&M in the first half. Now, as we look at these stats, Mike and Pat, you can tell they're very even, but particularly in the passing yardage, and most of that yardage came in that two-minute drill, Pat, when they went to the wideouts, and they had to, obviously, with only a minute 38 left in that drive that led to the field goal. Well, you're right, Timmy. Uh, A&M, you know, Murray completed 15 passes, but nine of them were just to Bernstein and Woodside for only 73 yards. That last drive, he was able to go across the middle to Shea Walker and once earlier to Tony Thompson for over half the yardage. And it'll be interesting to see if AM comes out trying to throw the ball downfield or goes back to that conservative offense. And interesting, as Jackie Sherrill looks on, that Texas A&M is a team that scored 74 points a week ago against TCU. They have three points here in the first half. Texas has done just an exceptional job of knowing where a and strengths are and trying to take away as much as possible. Well, I think this is what's frustrating for the coaching staff for Texas. I think that they've come in here, they've grown along with their players, a lot of young players, and they're ready for next year. They feel they have the personnel. Fred Akers is confident that if he's allowed to retain his job and the coaching staff stays intact, that they'll take this conference next year. As you saw, they're trying to avoid the first losing season since 1956, and Brad Lucky, number uh, 
83 in the middle of your picture there on the kickoff team as they broke it off is, is one of those Texas linebackers who has come back from an injury. They lost so many guys, uh, especially Britt Hager, a guy who was given number 60, which was Tommy Nobis's number. And the Longhorns have just been decimated at linebacker, but they've done a great job tonight. And there is Ward set to kick it away as Texas A&M will receive to start the second half in the 3-3 game. There is Rod Harris, the deep man standing inside the five-yard line back there with Valentine and Washington. And there is Brett Stafford, who had an exceptional first half. Really given time to throw this year, he has been exceptional. I think a lot of people who came to this game tonight, and almost 80,000 of them, thought they were going to see a blowout. We haven't really had a close game in this series unless you go back to 1979. But not tonight. We've had a beauty. High short kick, and Valentine will take it at the five. And gets back to the 25 and no more. A 20-yard return for Valentine. Here's what Texas A&M was able to do on its possessions in the first half. The first two times they had the ball, they had to punt it away. Then the third time, they got off their best drive of the first half, a 10-play drive, but they missed the field goal. Then the next two drives, they also were forced to punt. And then in the two-minute drill, they really did the job, a nine-play drive that resulted in a field goal to tie it up. Even though Roger Vick has been able to get his yards, Texas has done a pretty good job in shutting down AM's ground game. And here goes Vic to start the second half. Nice hole up the middle. Once again, Braggs is in on the tackle, number six. He's done a nice job coming out of the secondary. And Dwayne Duncan, the middle linebacker, number 48. He is a freshman, 222 pounds. A lot of youth on that defense. Well, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Texas continues to play the type of defense they, they did in the first half, playing up close to the line of scrimmage, trying to take away the big plays. If they start dropping back into that zone, playing conservatively, I think Murray will burn him just like he did with Shea Walker at the end of that first half. Second and three right now, Woodside on the wing. And Vic again. Another big hole up the middle out to the 42. These are the kind of adjustments that are made in the locker room at halftime. And right now, Texas A&M has made a nice adjustment on running up the middle. Well, one place that you can be vulnerable with that four-man line, if you don't have a middle backer that can fill quickly and fill strong, you can be burned up the middle, just like they have been on the first two plays. Kick those tackles out and run up, put the center against the middle backer, and you got some big yardage. a has moved the ball out to its 42-yard line. Murray back to throw on first down, batted down. The line of scrimmage, pretty decent pressure again by the front wall, and Steve Llewellyn got a hand up and blocked it. Again, penetration is the key for that defensive line. Steve Llewellyn is going to jump up and knock this ball down. It's right in the middle of the screen. He's going to get that big paw up right there and knock it down with that right hand. But again, the key was penetration. If they can get in his face, stop Murray from having nice passing lanes, that'll help their secondary incredibly. Some of the uh, nicer sights here in Austin, Texas on a rainy Thanksgiving night. Glad you could be with us. Murray on the option, back to Vic. And they diagnose it beautifully. Knocked down by John Hagee, number 17. Steve Llewellyn was over there along with 94, Brian Espinoza. And Hagee is the guy who made all the comments earlier this week, really disparaging kind of things about Texas A&M. But his teammates said, hey, look, he can back it up. Well, he came in and made the hit there, but I don't know. He's, uh, he's not the biggest guy out on the field, and uh, he sure, uh, sure had the biggest words I've ever read in the newspaper. I mean, he was not just abusing the players and the coaches. He went after being an Aggie, period. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. Third and eight. You can see the rain falling. It's made the ball a little bit slippery here since early in the second quarter. Texas showing blitz, and here they come. They've been successful before on it. They don't get to Murray this time. The receiver falls down, and it's the tight end Bernstein. And he and Hagee were back there, and Murray is upset. Bernstein wanted a penalty. Murray wanted a penalty, and they're not going to get it. John Hagee was fortunate here. He had the tight end Rod Bernstein all by himself, man-to-man -man coverage, Right in the middle of the screen, right here, you'll see it. He's gonna, Bernstein had him beat badly for a touchdown. He tripped him, and that's definitely a penalty. He was fortunate that was a touchdown. He just tripped him intentionally because Bernstein had a big play right there. I don't know. I thought their feet tangled up, but it's still going to be called most of the time. Stump just got it away, and then he's hit. The flag is down. There's going to be a running into or roughing the kicker call as, I'm sorry, Todd Schwantz got the kick away. It was only 23 yards, but they hit him. 
and that is a cardinal sin. If you don't get to the ball, you can't hit the kicker. Well, they've had a couple opportunities to block one of these punts. And I know as a punter, this is a bad feeling. Right now, he's thinking to himself, i got to get rid of this ball quickly. And he just does get rid of it. And now he'll be hit. That's definitely a penalty. He went directly into the ball. He went after his foot instead of diving across. Had he dived across, he might have blocked that ball instead. Penalty, first down for AM and and a big break. And it was Tex Mercer, the linebacker, who got a piece of him. And hit the ball. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense, first. Now, you heard the official say he didn't hit the ball. If he had, you can go ahead and hit the kicker. And Fred Akers is contending, I believe, that he hit the ball. Big break for AM. They have the ball at the Texas 41. Bernstein will shift to the near side. And they'll go back to Vic up the middle, dragging people with him to the 35. And Hagee was uh, trying to support Bragg's case that he'd stolen the football, but it was after the whistle. Vic is a tough runner. There's Aldridge on the sideline. Texas has been alternating its defense, sometimes going with uh, fewer linebackers and changing up defensive linemen. I understand Aldridge has a uh, sore shoulder right now. There's Vic again up the middle. And Pat, they found something there to attack in the middle of that Texas defense. Well, you're right, Mike. At halftime, coaches, good coaching, good staffs, they make adjustments. And right now, they're just running the ball right up the middle. They're using those big, strong guards, particularly Fontenot, number 67, their right guard. Well, 54 is in for Fontenot right near Whitfield. He has a nice job. That's a backup guard. He took the man out all by himself. He handled Espinosa man-to-man, which is unusual. That's why the play worked. That A&M offensive line is enormous. Vic this time hit once and then dragged down Duncan again on the tackle. And Llewellyn was the first man to get to him. What they're doing on those runs up the middle is they're using their guards. They're taking the tackles, Llewellyn and Espinosa, and they're handling them man-to-man. -man. They're using Wilson, the center, to go on to Duncan, the middle backer. And Vic's got all kinds of running room. And once he starts going forward, he's fast, as we said, but also very strong. In that 4-3, the down linemen have to protect the linebackers and allow them to make the tackles. And if those linebackers are being blocked, the running backs are going to be able to go a long way, second and seven. Murray wants to throw. And dropped by Woodside. Wide open at the 16-yard line and right through his hands. Espinosa was coming hard after Murray. But Murray had it on target, and Woodside simply dropped it. Well, Keith Woodside does not drop very many passes. They have him out at wing here. He is a running back, but he plays a lot like a wide receiver. And this ball should have been caught, and he could have split this and gone a long way. He's not even a defender in the picture oh. yet. Well, Kevin Murray did an excellent job of reading that coverage. He made the, the throw. Keith Woodside let him down on that one. Murray now 15 out of 25, 152 yards. He has not hit his last four, but that one certainly wasn't his fault. Third and seven right now. Harrison Motion. Got time, and he throws to Bernstein. Complete driven out of bounds at the 13. That will be an A&M first down. Hagee made the tackle. Well, there's another one-on-one -on -one battle between John Hagee and Rod Bernstein. And Hagee might talk a good game, but I don't think he's going to win this battle very often. Bernstein split out as a tight end. He's very tough. He runs like a running back. Just man-to-man -man coverage, and he just left Hagee in the dust. Hagee runs him out of bounds. It is a first and 10. A&M at the 13. Murray throwing the ball with a lot more confidence in the second half. Vic. Another big hole. He gets to the 10. Braggs got over there quickly to cut it down. Well, one reason they've been able to isolate Bernstein on Hagee man-to-man, -man, they didn't do it in the first half. They were doubling Bernstein the whole first half until that last drive when Shea Walker burned him. So they obviously came out in the second half and said, we're going to have to take away Walker. Murray went right back to Bernstein. Good play by a quarterback. A mistake, a fumble led to the Texas A&M score in the first half. A field goal, a roughing the kicker call has led to this drive. Second and seven. Vic again. Gets almost four. Llewellyn, number 93, hanging on to him. Bronner also in there. We've got 10 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. We're tied at three. 
And Vic's numbers continue to mount. Looks like the rain is almost over. Not a bad night here. A little under 50 degrees probably by now with a slight breeze. Third and three. Biggest play of the ball game. Bernstein in motion. Murray can't find anybody. Now throws and Harris. What a down. What a catch. Rod Harris picked that one off the top of the AstroTurf. A great grab. Kevin Murray just, <laughs> that ball had a lot of heat on it. You know, it's wet out there. Exceptional catch by Rod Harris. Slater comes on to try the point after. Let's go! As the yell leaders look on. And Slater, who has missed only one point after all year, drills this one through it. Rod Bernstein goes in motion. And they decide to double-team the tight end again. He goes in motion, goes to the corner, and this opens up Harris. Now it's just a matter of Murray having enough time, but this is a very difficult catch. It was well defensed. Oh. He was wide open, but what a catch. The key there again was Bernstein being double-teamed. And Jackie Sherrill sees his team take the lead for the first time in the ball game. 10-11 to go in the third quarter. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah. too. I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. <laughs> what are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? <laughs> hey, really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The new GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? Now for young men and women in the armed forces. It's a great place to start. See your local recruiter. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Own the world aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. Texas A&M at Texas is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. It's Texas A&M now on top of Texas, 10-3. to There is Rod Harris, the young man who made his first catch of the night, and he made it count. A brilliant catch in the end zone for a touchdown. Well, again, Mike, the key here was... Another error by the Texas defense. Uh, you know, you rough the kicker, it doesn't go down as a turnover, but you might as well count it as one because they sure. retain possession. And here comes the 12th man kickoff team, and these guys are tough. In three years, the longest return they've ever given up is 39 yards. They are all walk-ons. And they won't let them, they won't let them practice with the scholarship players because they put them all out and put them all in the hospital. Jackie Sherrill uh, got this idea when he saw the bonfire and saw all the spirit and these people were willing to do anything with their bodies coming down from the bonfire. And he said, hey, these guys ought to be playing football. They are allowed to come to this away game because it's the final regular season game when the seniors don't count toward the roster. A low bouncing kick this time. They will go back to the 27-yard line as Jones is really upended and Danny Balcar down to make the tackle. They really hit you. Here's what Texas was able to do in the first half. First possession, they had to punt the ball away after a nine-play drive. Then a 10-play drive resulted in a field goal. They got another good drive, only to miss a field goal, followed by a four-play drive that resulted in a fumble. The last time they touched the ball, they had to punt. And now they're really going to have to do something on offense down by seven points. Gay is in motion. And Norris, the fullback, never had a chance. Helm was waiting for him when he got to the corner. Last scoring drive, aided by a penalty, remember, on a roughing the kicker call. Went 75 yards, took up 13 plays, and Murray capped it off with a pass to Harris and a great grab in the end zone for the touchdown. 
No gain on the last play as Norris gets an infrequent carry. And Stafford, who is 8 out of 12 for 128 yards, may have to put it up. And we'll see if AM comes on the blitz. They were doing more of that near the end of the half. They do. Tony Jones, man-to-man -man coverage. And he was throwing for Jones, and the pass was overthrown. Coverage by Holly. Pretty good coverage, but Stafford just had to unload that baby. Well, what they did on that play is Texas put everybody over on the right, and they left Jones man-to-man -man on the wide side of the field. He had the whole field to work with, but this play didn't work simply because of the pressure. There's the blitz right up the middle by the linebackers and the defensive line. They knock him down. He just didn't have time. He had Tony Jones out there. He didn't have enough time to beat the guy. So he just ran a straight post pattern. He didn't have time to really put a move on him. He's still a, he's just not a receiver yet. He's just an athlete out there. He'll have to improve. But he can fly at 5'7", 138 pounds. Showing blitz again. They come again. Stafford unloads again. And threw it for Brown before he made the cut. And he had to. And either the pass was thrown early or Brown made the cut late. Well, Eric Metcalf, they use him a lot now. He's in the slot. The passing situation, he cuts across. He is absolutely held here, oh. tackled by Kelm. He's pointing right at the ref. The ref's looking at the quarterback, which is not his job right there. Kelm undressed him. That's discouraging for a receiver. And now Waits, the barefooted one, will come on to kick it away. They almost blocked it. Waits gets it off a short kick, and Harris fumbled. Got it back. Very fortunate that he got it back and was flattened. 37-yard kick, a loss of eight on the return. Well, this often happens when you have a punt. Almost blocked. He gets a low, wobbly kick. Difficult one to read. It goes off his hands. If he didn't get a good bounce there, it would have been a big turnover. Same guy who makes such a brilliant catch in the end zone on the touchdown pass. We'll be back in a minute. This baby will blow the doors off anything on the road. Just like a BMW. Isn't she a beauty? <laughs> BMW would build one like this. You think BMW has advanced technology? Listen to this. Your door is open. Huh? For about $22,000, you can own a BMW 325. Or the hollow feeling of having settled for less. I've always been afraid of two things. Flying and good cameras. With this Canon T70, I'm not afraid. This push-button T70 is so easy to use, I can even get the tough shot. And now you can get a $25 rebate. Great shot at a great price. Nothing to fear. The Canon T70, so advanced it makes the tough shot simple. I'm fearless now. Ooh. Now get a rebate up to $25 from Canon. Details at participating dealers. Hope you had enough turkey today. This one qualifies as dessert. A 10-3 Texas A&M Texas football game from Austin, Texas. 9:08 to go, third quarter. A&M has the ball at their own 29. Fifty was slightly shaken up on the touchdown play. Is back in there. He'll pick up a couple. Let's go down to the sideline and Tim Brando. Tim, Pat, you pointed up on the last series that Texas was allowing Bernstein to give them some problems because they respected Shea Walker so much from the last drive in the first half. Expect Texas to come back out with coverages that are similar to the ones they had in the first half. A lot of pressure on these DBs because of the linebacker problems they've had all year due to injury. Second out, seven yards to go. Murray to throw. Far sideline, complete and out of bounds is Woodside. They love to run him out of the backfield. Be enough for a first down there. And here's what's happened. The two mistakes Texas has made has cost them all 10 points. Fumble led to a field goal and a roughing the kicker call kept the drive alive that resulted in the A&M touchdown. That's why coaches hate mistakes. First and ten Aggies. They appear to be so much more confident on offense in the third quarter than they were in the entire first half. Vic dragging people with him to the 46-yard line. Well, that's one reason they are more confident this half, Mike. They've been able to get that running game to Vic going. And if they can get that running game going, they'll be able to set up the passes either to Bernstein when they single up on him or to their wideouts, Walker or Harris, on the outside. Vic is now up to 91 yards 
rushing, and he has 50 yards in this half. This is second and four. Vic again. Got maybe one. 96, Chalmer Adams right in the middle of the pack, and he and Brauner dragged him down. Duncan also stuck a helmet in there. Well, Vic has all that yardage in between his guards. Just right up sure the middle. Does. He's not going wide. But they look like wide plays because he has so much running room before he's ever hit. He's had four straight 100-yard games and six in the season. And he is going to be the Southwest Conference leading rusher this year because Jeffries of TCU statistically does not qualify. He has more yards, which I think is really an aberration. But he will not have played in 75% of the game. So Roger Vick will be the Southwest Conference rushing champion. Murray back to throw. Dumps it off over the middle and... What a shot by Hagee after the pass completion to Vic. I think Vic would rather carry the ball than catch those little floaters over the middle. At least he sees him coming that way. Well, John Hagee's been in a lot of plays this half. He's hungry for this game. He's the guy that ridiculed the Aggies all week long. I watch him come up and make this shot. Oh. And he saved the first down. Letting his forearms do the talking tonight. Fourth and a yard. A&M will have to kick it away. No roughing call this time, and a pretty punt. Metcalf lets it go. This might stay inside the 10. And they downed it at the 1. No, that's the wrong call, Mike. You cannot carry that ball into the end zone. I couldn't tell where he the, ball the ball went. ran right into the end zone, didn't he? I couldn't tell, Pat. It was a 50-yard kick. I thought he left it behind and went in, but I'm not sure. We didn't have a great angle on it. That's what Fred Akers wants to know, I'll tell you that. Mech Metcalf made the right decision. He got out of the way of this ball. He didn't really have a play. That's absolutely oh, the wrong right. call by the official. Oh, the I can't ball believe that. That's, uh, that's absolutely terrible. I mean, he carried the ball into the end zone. Clearly a touchback. Clearly a touchback. Great play by Bob, the linebacker. And the ball's down at the 1. 6.33 to go in the quarter. Brakes, internationally patented suspension, uncanny control. Conventional luxury sedans are built to survive accidents. The BMW 520 AD is built to avoid them. Let's see if they're okay. Defensive lineman Robbie Brazina talks about the importance of education. Football is a great game, and that is what got me to the University of Houston. But there's a much more important side to college, and that is the academic side. You must realize that football is a fun game, while academics is much more serious. So remember, you must take advantage of the greatest opportunity ever provided for you, an education. The preceding message has been brought to you by the College Football Association. 10 to 3, Texas pinned at their own one-yard line. 99 yards away from a tie with 6.33 to go third quarter. Stafford in a tough situation. Give it to Metcalf. Gets a little breathing room out to about the three. Go down to Tim Brando at the sideline. Timmy? Lawrence Hipple, many, many years ago, a fortune teller in Austin, Texas, came up with a red candle. This candle was supposed to be the hex of A&M. The red stands for courage. That's what it would take for Texas to pull the upset. Now, they used this in the 60s. This is the first time they used, used it since then. So far, it seems to be working. They're in the hunt. Second and eight, a flag is down. Stafford, deep sideline for Jones. Good defensive play by Flowers over there to bat the way. And we'll check out the flag for you. And AM clapping, so apparently it is against Texas. 
probably not take the penalty because the ball's at the three-yard line would bring up a third down. Holland discussing the option. It's a solid A&M defense. Right now, the kicking game has made the difference in this second half. A roughing the kicker allowed AM yes, to continue, and now it had the ball down in the one. Offense, penalty has declined. It will be third down. You see the Miami final. The Hurricanes go undefeated in the regular season, knocking off East Carolina. And AM has dominated this half with 18 offensive plays to only five for Texas. Stafford to throw on third and long. Bombs away. Jones couldn't hold it. I think he'd have been out of bounds if he caught it anyway at the 35. Right now, a and decided they're going to play Tony Jones man-to-man, -man, although he's very fast. They think their corners can stay with him. Here, they're going to try to get some safety help, but he's so fast, safety isn't a factor. But again, it's just he's just not a receiver yet, Mike. He's, uh, he's out yep. there. He's, you know, he's got the speed. He's got the talent, but there's a lot more to receiving than just running by people and trying to catch the ball. Give Stafford credit. He put it in put it in there, and now Waits is going to have to stand under his own goal post and try to get a good one out of there as Harris stands inside the 50-yard line. Go, go, go. They came after him. He got it out of there. Good kick. And put it out of bounds at midfield. Excellent pressure punt by Alex Waits of 47 yards. a and in possession when we come back. Behold the beer belly. 50 million Americans need a shortcut to get from fat to flat. Introducing the Gut Buster. It's the ultimate fitness machine specifically designed to firm and flatten the stomach as nothing else can. You're as serious as he is. That flat stomach you had in high school can be yours again. Basic spring-ups like these work the upper abdominal region. Reverse for tension-assisted high-risers. This sturdy unit travels easily, so you can exercise anywhere. And it's yours with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go ahead, gut busters. If you're serious about a flat stomach, exercise your right to call toll-free now. To order, call 1-800-631-1000. That's 1-800-631-1000. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to The Gut Buster, Department 5, Canton, Ohio. That toll-free number again is 1-800-631-1000. The BYU offense is tough to beat, but San Diego State may have the defense to do it. Live Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern. 5.33 left, third quarter. Texas A&M on top by a touchdown over Texas, a team that had taken a 3-0 lead. A&M has the last 10, and now they have the ball at midfield. Out of the eye. Fake to Woodside. Murray to throw. And complete to Vic. And Vic driven out of bounds. Inside the Texas 35-yard line by Richard Peavy. Well, that nice. time they changed it up a little bit and went to Vic instead of Woodside, a well-designed play. It really was. They faked to Vic up the middle. They've been running that play so effectively, and then he held the ball for a long time, gave Vic an opportunity to sneak behind the linebackers. He was wide open. You're right about one thing. Kevin Murray's playing with so much more confidence this half. He's able to pick apart this Texas defense, and the running game's working well. First and 10, A&M at the 32, trying to open up some breathing room, and Vic gets about two yards and Chalmer Adams, 96, was holding on to him, along with Jay Jocks, number 91. And we are told on that punt that the ball was ruled in possession of the coverage team at the one-yard line. That's why the ball was down at the one and not taken out on a touchback to the 20-yard line. Well, that's a rule. It's enough to make me come back to be a punter. If I can have balls <laughs> down on the one-yard line when my guy catches it and runs into the end zone. Vic now 24 carries, 94 yards, going for his fifth straight 100-yard game. Second and eight. Big defensive stand here for Texas. They have got the hold. Here comes the blitz. They may have burned themselves. Vic tripped up as he got to the 25-yard line. Big play by Peavy, who came up from the secondary, made a saving tackle. Vic had a lot of green in front of him. Well, Texas decided to gamble on this. They're going to blitz. Here comes the, the safety right up. Jumps over, they pitch the ball the opposite way. They could have had a huge play right here. You can see there's nobody in the way, but Peavy comes out of nowhere and trips up Vic. That's a tough tackle to make. 
and he's and Texas is lucky that he put him down because that could have been six. Vic has gone over the hundred yard mark with that carry. It's third and three. They are well within range for Scott Slater. If they don't get the first down, and Vic runs into his own man, shakes off the tackle, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but that'll bring up fourth down. Good defensive stand by Texas there, and they'll have to bring on Slater to try for the field goal. You feel good when your defense doesn't have to stop a ball carrier's uh, momentum. We just ran into the left tackle and had nowhere to go. Slater, who was hit one from 23 and missed from 48, will now try from 42. He has been a very active kicker for the high-scoring offense this year. And he's got it. Scott Slater from 42 yards has given Texas A&M a 13-3 lead. Nice snap, nice hold. He's going to make these. <laughs> he's had a big year. That's his 20th of the season. That's a new record for this conference, and he's happy. He knows it's a record, and he also put them two scores ahead now of Texas. 42-yarder. He made it look like an extra point. Well, these two kickers uh, just have exceptional legs. There's Roger Vick on the sideline. He's gone over the 100-yard mark tonight. ESPN's live presentation of college football continues this Saturday when we offer up a doubleheader. First, live CFA action between Brigham Young and San Diego State. That will be followed by a Pac-10 battle, Arizona and Stanford from Tokyo. Our coverage begins at 7 with the Mercury College Football Scoreboard Show. Different situation now for Texas. They are down by 10, and the offense is going to have to come back and get the job done. And Slater will kick it away with the 12th man kickoff team which is a unique thing in college football That's later, kick it off. Metcalf and Jones are deep to the sea, standing at the five and the Longhorns could use a big return they'll kick it to Jones short kick taken at the 12 and he gets back to about the 32. Bodies flying everywhere. Chad Adair makes the tackle on kickoff coverage for the 12th man unit. That's Bernstein with that brace that is now so popular. Prevents a lot of injuries and they're putting uh, new tape on it, I think. Would have saved a lot of careers if somebody thought of that a few years ago. Dump it off to Metcalf. Nice catch. Gets out to about the 37-yard line. Brought down by Brooks. Scoring drive. Only uh, five plays and 25 yards that set up Slater's field goal after Texas had to punt the ball out of their own end zone. Slater, the record-setting place kicker, now with a pair tonight, and it's a 10-point lead for the Aggies. Bidding for another Cotton Bowl bid and the outright championship of the Southwest Conference. Texas, a team with a 3-0 lead, is trying to stop them in one of the great grudge battles in college football. And a flag is down and stops the play. Texas seems to have lost that crisp quality they had to their offense. I think John... On that play, Johnny Holland again came up. He's sneaking in between his nose guard, Samuel Bryant, and Jay Muller, the, the uh, defensive end, and he's, he's really distracting uh, Brett Stafford. In that case, I really think he took too long. There was a penalty because he was audibling again. Johnny Holland making his presence felt in a lot of ways. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Second down. It's a good look at Holland, who looks like he's a lot bigger than 220 pounds. He looks as big as those defensive linemen that go 250, 260, 270. Larry Kelm looks a little bigger than 222. Here comes the blitz. Everybody on the way, and Stafford lows it up in the air, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Flowers. Flowers back to the 41-yard line. The fifth interception this year for James Flowers. Flowers. 
There is a penalty flag down. But it looks like it would be after the interception. We'll check it, though. Johnny Holland wants to know what's going on and apparently very satisfied with the explanation. And it's going to cost them 15 yards, but they are going to have possession of the football. It looked on that pass uh, play that Gay was wide open over the middle on a deep pattern. Illegal block below the waist on the run back. Down. Well, this interception is caused again by pressure. Johnny Holland, you saw him, number 11, jumping in Stafford's face, and he just forces this ball into the coverage. A little underthrown. He really didn't have a chance to set up and throw where he wanted to. Got to give it to the Texas A&M coaches. They've come out. They were using a lot of different looks. They're not playing conservatively. They've got Holland coming and Kelm coming. Stafford's having trouble adjusting. Made some great adjustments at halftime. Here's Murray on the option out to Vic. Plenty of running room. January trips him up as he got to the 40-yard line. Roger Vick, A&M has thrown just about a little bit of everything at him here in the second half. Well, that's Roger Vick, his fullback, who he tosses the ball out to. I said earlier, he runs like a tailback. So many weapons, and they're using them all right now. Stafford talking to the coaches upstairs, trying to uh, get an idea of what they might be able to do the next time they come back with a football. Clock working down to a minute 40 in the third quarter. Vick on the carry. He's been extremely busy. Bulls over people into Texas territory this time. Braggs is in on the tackle again. Braggs has been very busy along with Hagee in that Texas secondary. Well, Roger Vick, in my book, is a definite pro star. He's got the speed. He's got the strength. His line just blows him out here, and he just takes the rest of it himself. What I like about him, Mike, is he runs very strong. He's not just fast. He's one of those guys, finds his team, he explodes, and he's got so much strength, he picks up the extra yardage. Just saw him take a big breath. 28 carries, that's a lot of work. He's also caught a couple of passes. First down, deep this time, and he's got Bernstein open. Bernstein to the 15-yard line. Braggs had to make the tackle. Bernstein, who's been catching so many of those little ones, goes for the big one this time. Well, they've sent him deep a couple times this half. They're just using all the weapons. Murray, no problem. He's got all kinds of time. Bernstein, very fast for a tight end. Runs a shake pattern on that. Fakes the post, goes to the corner. They just can't stay with him. Oh, yeah. He's confident right now. Kevin's got it going. I said earlier, he is a pure drop back passer. Very unusual. Delivers the ball very well, and he could run if he needed to. He's been on fire in the second half. First and 10, Aggies at the 15. Here goes Vic again, reversed his field, and that was a mistake because Thomas Aldridge was waiting for him. You can go inside of Aldridge. Going outside of Aldridge is a risky proposition. It's not risky. It's a no-go. <laughs> again, you got to give it to uh, Roger Vic right now. He's the nucleus of this offense. He's setting up the passing game. The offensive line is just absolutely blowing out the front four of Texas. I'm very surprised by that. Murray, who had such a tough start, except for those little uh, dump passes over the middle, now 21 out of 31, 231 yards in the touchdown. Ball up to 17, fumble, and Murray got it back. Big break there as he lost the snap from center and pounced on it. Makes, uh, makes your heart skip a beat, doesn't it, Coach? That's going to be the end of the third quarter from Memorial Stadium in Austin. A&M 13, Longhorns 3. The following message is about life. The life you don't get in an ordinary battery. And the life you do get in new Kodak Super Life Alkaline batteries. They last much longer than ordinary batteries. And only Super Life has a real gold tip to ensure the best contact. Oh, oh yeah, let's see if we get on the replay. Now, do you settle for the ordinary or go for the gold? Sending a letter overnight was once a prerogative reserved only for the very rich and the very wasteful. Now, with the UPS Next Day Air letter, everyone can send a letter overnight. At a paltry $8.50, you may think of it as the overnight letter for the very smart and the very frugal.
and the tightest ship in the shipping business. We're not a company. But we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines. The Army. The Navy. The Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. No battery has the energy to outrun the Energizer, even in a toy robot. No battery outruns the Energizer. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. We hope you and your family had a great one. And they've had a lot of signs around like this since the beginning of the year here in Texas. People, uh, some at least, would like to get rid of Fred Akers. The decision is supposed to be made Saturday. He really needs to come back and win this ball game, I think. The ball's at the 19 for A&M, third and 12. Murray to throw. Here comes the blitz. He got rid of it and dropped. Walker had it over the middle and couldn't hold it. And then a little shove between he and Jeffries. So that'll make him go for the field goal. And somebody is down for AM. It looks like Marshall Land, the big offensive tackle. Shea Walker's just running a pattern here, a crossing route. They had Bernstein doubled on the other side, and Walker was wide open. He doesn't drop many passes like that. Now Walker's just embarrassed that he dropped that ball. He knows he should have caught it, but a nice read by Murray again on that play. And they're working on, it appears, the ankle of Marshall Land, who is a 347-pound offensive tackle who has very little experience. He played virtually uh, not at all a year ago, and with uh, a bad knee, and here is a young man that uh, the coaching staff thinks is going to be a heck of a pro football player. Well, he was 392 pounds when they got him. He's down to 347 now or something. You know, yep. we talked about it last time we had him on the air. He was ASB president of the JC in Sacramento. Right. He's got a bright future whether it's on the football field or not. Well, he may be 347. Wedley gets the turkey tonight after the game. He'll be back up to 380. Slater will go for a 34-yard field goal attempt. And it's right through. Slater hits his third of the night. And with 14.50 to go in the game, it's now AM 16, Texas 3. Why sit in the doldrums when you can ride the crest? The Atlantic Get the Atlantic difference. 8% on your money market, guaranteed for two months. Call 1-800-4-ATLANTIC and make more money with Atlantic's money market. 8% guaranteed for two months. Call the Atlantic coast to coast for an 8% money market. The Atlantic, member FSLIC. You're on the 10 o'clock American flight? The meeting's this afternoon. Seems like you're busier than ever. Dad, I'm glad you could stop by. Wish I had more time. Now, when did you say you were planning on coming home again? Not until the end of the term. You know, uh, I don't think I can wait that long. When you're something special, people know it. Brought to you by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. The glow from the Texas Tower here on campus in Austin. But right now, it doesn't mean a lot to the Aggie fans or to the Longhorn fans because they're down 16-3. Set to receive the kickoff with 14.50 to go. Take a look at the scoring drive. 51 yards in seven plays. Slater again captain. A 34-yard kick. And it broke his own 
Southwest Conference record for field goals in the season. Kick three tonight. And there he is. It's been a great weapon for Fred, or for uh, Jack and Cheryl. Another short kick. This one taken by Nelson, who is blasted as he got to the 32-yard line. And how would you like to try to return kicks against these guys? They just go out and run over people. That was Corey Allen. Gee whiz. They just live for this. I mean, they, all they do is wait all week for one shot like that. And they'll all go crazy when they look at the films. They're going to jump up. Those guys live for plays like that. And boy, they take advantage when they get it. And they're all walk-ons. And it's just unbelievable you could have a unit like that. But if there's going to be that kind of spirit and that kind of tradition anywhere in college football, it would be at Texas A&M. So the Longhorns have to start from the 21. Stafford comes out throwing. Metcalf dodges one tackle. Got maybe a yard as Holland brought him down. I want to thank our spotters, Tom Mullis, Bobby Little, and Ron Franklin for all their help tonight. Done a great job for us. We talked a lot about number 11, Johnny Holland, All-America this half. He has just taken over for Texas A&M. So much speed laterally. Look at that. He'll run down Metcalf and make the tackle. Oh, that's just excellent play. That was from inside linebacker. He runs so well. In the third quarter, Texas has had seven yards, only eight offensive plays. They have been dominated by the defense. Showing blitz, and here they come again. Stafford's got to unload and does. Metcalf out in the flat. Tried to make the move and slipped at the 24. Being taunted a little bit by Brooks out there. He was being chased by Jones. Right now, the, you know, the last two plays really typify what they've done this half, and that is not much. They're throwing laterally. They're not getting the ball downfield. If you remember, Mike, in that first half, they burn him up the middle with a couple of throws. One to Metcalf. They haven't been able to do anything downfield this half where Stafford has hardly had any time to set up either. If he's going to throw it, he's got to unload in a hurry. Texas A&M defense got active. They sure did. Third and seven. Texas has to do something on offense, and they need to do it quick. They need two scores. Metcalf, 35-36 yard line. Nice catch, and Brooks made the tackle. But it'll be a first down, and once again, Stafford got the ball out there in a hurry and right on target. What a beautiful throw, too, by Stafford on this play. We said earlier, Metcalf, they use him out of the backfield. They use him in motion. Here, he's just going to run an out pattern. There's just no way that Chet Brooks can guard him. He's just too fast. When, that, when he gets that type of throw, it's a first down. And Brooks is a corner. That's the first first down of the second half for Texas. Metcalf. They'll try the running play, and he didn't have a chance. Sadler brought him down. Tim Brando's down at the sideline for us. Tim? Going into this series, the Texas staff realized they had to get the ball in Eric Metcalf's hands. You might recall Mike and Pat in the first half. They did have some success early when they were able to get the ball into his hands, but not as a pass receiver, more as a runner, and a couple of times as a decoy on a double reverse. They came into this series realizing they've got to go to the dance with the one that brung them, and that's number two. That's the one A&M's defense is concerned with. Seven catches, 60 yards from Metcalf. Stafford going for the bomb. He's got Johnson at the 34-yard line, covered by Flowers, but Flowers got turned around. And Gabriel Johnson just waited. So this is what they need to do. I know they have to get the ball in Metcalf's hand, but they have to get to their wide receivers, Johnson and Gain. In this case, it's man-to-man -man coverage. AM's doing a lot of blitzing. They've got to burn them deep, and Stafford makes a nice throw here. But really, it's the catch that makes this play. Gabriel Johnson will stop. The defender, Flowers, just comes, just loses track of the ball. But that's what you need to do. You have to go to your wideouts. Never easy for a quarterback. Brett Stafford throws this ball. That's a minor hit, but they go down every single play. They, they lead these types of games with a lot of bruises. Flanker Everett Brett Gay limped off the field on that play, and Nelson, number 32, is into the top of your screen to replace him. First is 10 Longhorns at the A&M 34. Hunter back in the ball game. The young man who fumbled in the first half hurt him on one drive but an excellent runner. Kelm made the tackle on him. Well, now that Texas has completed a long ball to the wide receiver, I think this puts a lot of pressure on Texas A&M. They're going to maybe go out of their man-to-man -man coverage, and right now you can go across the middle on the team. Gay check back into the ball game. Obviously, all right, left for a play. Let's look for a crossing route here. 
Gay and Jones both go to the top of your screen as wide receivers. Looks like they're being covered out there man-to-man. Gay will come back the other way, and they'll go to Metcalf on the sweep. He wants to throw it. Not a great pass, and it's almost intercepted by Brooks. They were trying to get the ball to Tony Jones, and Metcalf just hung it up there. Well, he's 0 for 1 this year with an interception. He was lucky he dodged one there. It could have been two. It's just going to be a pitch. They're going to fake it. Jones is trying to fake, but nice coverage. Brooks just ignored that little uh, jogging motion. Player almost picked it. Now, Brooks did not buy the uh, Jones act of going out there to throw a block on him. Stafford now 13 to 22, 180 yards. He has one interception on the night. Big play, third and eight, Longhorn. Metcalf in motion. Another blitz. Stafford with time for Metcalf, and he couldn't hold it at the 10. Perfect throw. Oh, what a great toss, and Metcalf really upset with himself. Brooks was beaten on the play as Metcalf turned on the Jets. One way you can indicate, it shows a quarterback that it's man-to-man. -man. Metcalf's in motion here, and a linebacker will be running with him. So it's a man-to-man -man coverage. He just runs out and up. Chet Brooks tries to pick him up, but this is such a good throw. Oh. Oh, that could have been six right there. You can't throw it much better, and it was a tough catch for Metcalf. But they needed a play like that. Stafford had it on the money. They will not go for the field goal. It would be about a 50-yard attempt. They will go for the first down on fourth and eight. The crowd come to its feet. The ones who weren't already there. Another blitz. They pick it up well, but now they're after Stafford. He got away somehow. Threw the ball, and it's incomplete. And a flag is down. They may call intentional grounding on this one, but it wouldn't matter since it was fourth and eight. Well, they picked up the blitz pretty well, gave him a second to throw, but he couldn't unload it. The operative word there is they gave him one second. Eight seconds, that's, which is more than he's seen time. most of the half. a and was great confidence that they can guard these guys man to man. They're well, bringing the officials people. officials are discussing, excuse me, Pat, the officials are discussing this penalty. Seemed like it had to be downing, though, the way they threw it. Well, it wouldn't have mattered. It was fourth down anyhow. We have illegal touching of a forward pass. The ball hit an ineligible receiver. The penalty will include a loss of down. The ball will go over. Well, it hit an offensive lineman is what happened. All right, right here, though. They're coming right with the full-out blitz. They're going to guard man-to-man. -man. Oh, he tries to throw the ball there, but it would have been picked. The defender was all over now. And now he just spins out of there, which is an excellent play, but he just has no one to throw to. He throws his sidearm and hits the lineman. Yeah, he's, he's making the call there. No, no question about that. Well, everybody was so excited about the penalty, I think they lost track of the fact that it was fourth down and they had the ball back anyhow. 11 minutes left to go in the game, and Texas A&M still has a 10-point lead. They'll give it off to Vic, up the middle for about four. Crosses the 40. Dwayne Duncan, the middle linebacker, was in on the stop. Vic's yardage total just continues to mount. 30 carries, 125 yards. And there is Stafford, who thought he had a touchdown pass to Metcalf on that third down, and really threw him a beauty. You just don't get that many opportunities when you have a receiver on man-to-man -man coverage, and you throw a ball that well. You've got to score. Vic is approaching the 100-yard mark in this half. He has 84 yards. Murray on the option, quickly to Vic. First down and more. Midfield to the Texas 49-yard line. Griffin made the tackle. What a weapon. They ran this play earlier. They're, they're using an option with Murray, and they're pitching to their fullback, who's in the tailback position. But again, he's not your typical fullback. He really reminds me of Roger Craig. I think he's going to be an excellent receiver when he gets up into the pro ranks. He's already shown his ability to run. And would like to work on the clock and, of course, get some more points if they can. They're up by 13 at 16-3. First and 10, the ball spotted at midfield. Vic off right guard. Tough going this time. Really, we mentioned that uh, 
Texas would have had a 49-yard field goal attempt, but really that would have been uh, asking a little much of their offense to get the field goal, still be down by 10, and then come back and score two other times. I don't think Fred Akers had any choice but to go for it at that point. Murray looking over the defense on second and seven. And he got it off. Woodside made the catch. Good grab at the 42-43 yard line. And Griffin brought him down. Tempers are getting a little short out there. After almost every tackle, there's a little shove one way or the other. Just so many weapons on this AM offense. You talk about Kevin Murray. Of course, he's a nucleus. But you have, we, what have we heard? We've heard Shea Walker. We've heard Rod Birdstein. We've heard Rod Harris. We've heard Keith Woodside. We've heard Roger Vick. They just got guys coming at you from all directions. That's why they're 8-2. and two. Why the maroon and white puts up some W's. Murray now after a slow start, 22 of 33, 236 yards and a touchdown. Big play, third and two. He wants to throw for it and he dumps it off the wood side. Got outside of January, made the catch. It's an easy first down. Murray being very, very patient tonight. And I think that's uh, a lot different than what we saw against LSU in that first telecast we had, one of their two losses. Yep. He really was impatient. He's been mature. He's, this, tonight, he, you know, early he just had the little throws to Bernstein and Woodside. Then he got to go up top to Shea Walker. Now he's mixing it up, and he's been on target when he's had to be. He's got to see part of uh, probably the best game he's ever played earlier this year against Baylor. He was just absolutely incredible. He didn't miss a thing. This is Valentine in at running back. It's down to about the 30-yard line. a and very carefully working on the clock right now. They're down to 822. This would be the first time in the long history of this season that goes back to the 1890s that for three seasons in a row, Texas A&M has beaten Texas. They did win three games in a row one time, but that was back when you'd play people twice in one year. Kind of like what Lafayette and Lehigh do. They play like five or six times a year. <laughs> I, you tell me. I'll believe you. I know Harvard and Yale like to play ten times a year. <laughs> Second and five. Nice fake by Murray. Now chased out of the pocket. Over the middle. Complete to Harris. And Harris at the 19-yard line. Well, Murray, I think, could complete anything right now. He's got it going. He hasn't had to use much of his athletic ability tonight. We know he's an excellent runner if he needs to be. His ankle's healthy. It had ankle problems last year. Now watch how mobile is. Mobile is in the pocket to move out. Just so cool right now. He's very confident. To find Harris, throw across his body just in time. That's just a nice throw. Eric Jeffries almost had the interception but couldn't get there. Woodside has caught seven passes. Burns through six. And Murray's hit nine of his last ten. He's really on fire. Roger Vick. Fumble! And Texas has it at the 21-yard line. The first thing Roger Vick has not done well all night, and Brian Espinosa made the recovery. Texas stays alive. This is a surprising play. Roger Vick does not fumble very often. He has this ball. He's going to get hit, and it's going to fly backwards. Wait till you see it. Come right back into your room here. Boom, here it comes. Brian Espinosa is very happy to fall on top of it. Thank you very much. We'll take the ball. Texas has got to score this drive, Mike. Texas down by 13 points. Texas A&M could have virtually put it away there. At least with another field goal, they would have had a 16-point lead. And Stafford is going to need to chuck the football. Because after Jones. Jones with a nifty little move there and runs out of bounds to the 37-yard line. Maybe instead of going downfield, that's what they need to do is get it to him in a hurry because he can run. Boy, he is awfully fast. Between, between him and Metcalf, they got two little guys that you just you don't see him. Tell you what, Jones made Metcalf look slow. <laughs> what a move. He's 5'7", 138 pounds. Played basketball last year in junior college, a la Spud Webb. It was a first down, first and ten for Texas. Their own 37, gay in motion. Stafford over the middle and too high. And Clark is leveled by Brooks. Right now, Brett Stafford's really lost his touch a little bit. You know, he, he's, been, he's a little flustered. They've rushed him awfully hard this half. He's starting to get the ball up too high. He's overthrowing his receivers. In that case, Clark was open. 
Earlier in the game, he hit that pass twice where they split the safeties. He had his receiver, he just threw it too high. Well, early in the game, I think he had a little more time, too. It's, it's tough to uh, throw a, a five or six second pattern a second and a half into it, <laughs> which is what he's been forced to do. Still 14 out of 26 and almost 200 yards. Another blitz, he gets it out to Metcalf, good catch. Can't get away from the tackler out to the 42. Brooks, who has been very busy tonight, makes the stop. Metcalf likes that spin move in whatever direction he's going.